Welcome to the Town of Deerfield's July 12, 2016 Select Board meeting here in the Town Hall in the Town of Deerfield. Um, I, I know, I can see that you're here, Matt. Um, so, um, what, public comment, what, what's been happening with public comment is that we've been, um, it's causing me concern that uh, my two new members might be a little bit nervous about continuing on the select board because we have the public comment has been going on for quite a bit and and as a result um, we haven't been getting to our business so we move public comment but we haven't done any warning to the people and I and I do feel public comment is um, absolutely important it's, it's an opportunity for us to listen clarify direct any concerns to the appropriate place, all that kind of stuff. So, um, w again, we just can't address lengthy business, but we didn't give anybody warning. We just moved the public comment down to the end of the meeting um, until we had a couple of, until we get an opportunity to discuss some kind of policy. I, I, I do hate to limit stuff to two minutes. So, basically what I'm saying is, I know you're here for public comment, Matt, and so, we didn't give anybody any opportunity, so why don't you? I'm okay with it. You I are? Want, I want to see how some of the agenda unfolds, and I'll come in towards the end when it's appropriate. I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, okay. Thank you. It's just yeah. we didn't we didn't give anybody warning, and so I do apologize for that. But I I I think Kip and Trevor have been so wonderful. They've really pitched in and working, and they know it. They spend a lot of hours, and it's really hard to have us have meetings really late. So. Okay, then we'll jump right in. The first item on the agenda is um, Dick, why don't you come up so Kip can, uh, and you can update us on the elementary school roof. Because apparently we have um, to make a vote or a question or something. Okay, I'll start. Um, I just got this, I guess it's an email that came through uh, explaining um, Pink's position on changing the shingles um, and the people from RDA are saying they're going to need one week to research the substitution of the shingles and they also want nearly $8,000 to do this. Uh, wow. I, I, I can't explain it any better way than it's extortion. Um, in the contract documents prepared by RDA, when you talk about the, the shingles, in numerous places they talk about um, a laminated, self-sticking, uh, mineral-based uh, shingle. They make reference to that in three or four different places. In another section, they show an outline of a tab shingle. Um, we went back and forth, uh, both shingles are made by the same manufacturer. They both carry the exact same warranty. The reason for substituting the shingles on site for the laminated shingles is that the tab shingle is only one shingle thick in the tabbed area. So the chances of it prematurely failing is much greater than the other shingles. So Doug probably put these pictures here. You can't really tell, so you're going to have to trust me. In this area here where you see the shingle, the shingle is actually two layers thick. But in between is the space the width of my thumb. And under that black line for that seven and a half inches, the shingle is only one layer thick. And that's where they will prematurely fail. Now even though that they have a warranty and they'll come back, it still opens the town up to potential uh, repair costs mm -hmm. because Labor. there's all kinds of things that these manufacturers are going to claim cause this. And one being the clean understructure. Up. Well, not only just the cleanup, it's just, say we don't clean it, it's the understructure. Okay. This particular shingle, that's a laminate shingle, that he does talk about in here where you see these raised uh, pieces of asphalt, in those areas, the shingle layers are actually three layers thick. 
And in between those, it's two layers thick. The shingles are the same thickness and made of the exact same material. So you've got two or three layers opposed to one and two. So for that reason, it's a much better shingle. The other thing is because it doesn't have the cutouts and because of the nature of this, as you look up the roof, it will look like a bunch of wood. They're all uneven. Mm -hmm. In a sense, that will cover a lot of um, imperfections in the roof. The original roof is reasonably flat, but not perfect. But since they put this foam down with the plywood on top, there's even more imperfections, over. just in the look, not in the structure. But also, the way this was designed is the panels of insulation are perfect four foot by eight foot. But the plywood is milled smaller to, a, to allow for expansion contraction. I think what they did was a bit overkill. But what it basically did is it created an area of a up inch. to a half inch and someplace greater. You bear with me. I will try to show you something. This is a picture of my thumb near the gap in the plywood. So you can see the space between the plywood is that great. That would be totally unacceptable in any kind of construction. But considering this is sitting on blocks and it's on a structure, meaning the original plywood and the steel decking, the plywood will go nowhere. But the shingles, as they get hot, could we'll dip take down. that dip and prematurely cut the single, the single layered shingles. So for those two reasons, it would be much better to use this type of shingle. This, like I said, the shingle has the exact same warranty and everything. It's actually lighter, so it would kind of help our situation with the snow load. Oh, I should say the live load of the whole roof. Uh, but it, and it would hide any of the imperfections. Uh, in all those gaps. The, all the gaps. So the right. only thing is getting RDA on board with this. I can't at this point understand why there's such resistance from RDA to change to these shingles since they fall, they meet his specifications within this book. I'm also in receipt of an email from RDA saying that uh, not only they say if we change the shingle we own the design but he goes above and beyond to tell us how it will not prevent any ice dams so he's he's now admitting from eliminating all of them to well it's going to help to saying it's not going to make any difference and that to me is very frustrating as well hmm. so on tomorrow morning I plan to attend that meeting and question him as to why these shingles that we want to use differ from the shingles that he spec in his book, which I think the specs can go either way. We're also going to have the manufacturer's rep there as well, not just the salesman from the firm that sold the shingles, but an actual rep from GAM to, you know, I, I'm not, I don't know what position he's going to take, but I'm sure that he's going to educate us on educate us on which way we should go. I mean, yeah. I. It makes sense to me that you'd want more layers on it to hide those gaps. I could see that, you know, 10 years down the road, you look up that thing, you're going to see a half inch gap is huge for one single layer shingle on it. In some places, it's three quarters of an inch, you know. So. That's a lot. Well, and. If it carries a and, and, and because of the weight, I mean, that was been an right. issue right along. Well, so if they're if lighter. these are lighter, but then see, why this, wouldn't we do this? This? Is, this is a problem with this book. <laughs> and and I, I said it from the beginning. It's a big book, there's a lot of information, but why I call it useless is because right in here it, it talks, it says having a minimum weight of 235 pounds, that's the maximum. So when you ask the man, well, was that an error? He goes, no. So you're saying the, the shingles can't possibly weigh more because if they did, you couldn't use them. So why couldn't they weigh less? And you get no answer. So these are things I'm going to have to push. Push them. Dick. What do you, I mean, what's your opinion on this? Oh, okay, I have to look at this from a building inspector standpoint only, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I can't make a decision right or left here now with shingle. What I'll tell you is that we had a consideration of weight load to start. That's where this started from, okay? Right. The design factor on the panels doesn't change no matter what, okay? The panel is the panel with the foam, the plywood, the spacing. 
The warranty is 40 years on both, okay? My only concern tomorrow, and, I, and I'm, again, I'm not making a choice of shingle A or shingle B, my concern is that I talk to the technical representative from the shingle manufacturer and he thoroughly ex convinces or gives documentation that both shingles are equal in the weight factor on the roof or less, okay? And his other concern that I want him there for, that I've asked for him originally way back, was that he will instruct the contractor how to apply these shingles to make sure that he certifies the contractor and certifies our 40 year, I believe it's 40 year warranty. 30. 30? Yes. Okay. So we have the warranty in effect no matter which shingle. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, kept the spearheading the rest of this and everything with everything else. I'm not going to put an opinion in on the shingles. I'm going to tell you that down the road, this one meets the code, this one meets the code. It's a judgment call on what do you want to do from here. I, I want to point out this. The contractor is doing a good job, and I, I'm very pleased with the cooperation I'm getting from them. Good to hear. So um, we will not have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel, but my personal opinion is I, I, I certainly would be interested yeah. in this. Unless there's some um, reason why that would be an inferior shingle that I'm unaware of, uh, but just logically looking at that and the gaps in that roof and what that's going to look like when you get layers of shingles on it, they get hot for 15 years. That's my main concern is just kind of, you know, how they're going to perform, where you're going to nail when you get, a, when you get to those foam gaps. Um, you know, I wish that they butted up, but I understand, I guess, you know, that's a specific design of the foam panel that you just wind up. I wish we knew we, we'd wind up with those gaps, but. Um, exactly. I, and I wish that, I wish I knew that as well, because in his design, in any of the technical drawings, it does not show that. Right. It you should know, show that. And, you know, get it just so you know right here too not only talks about this laminate it it here specifies that it has to be a single three-piece laminated shingle and the ones that they, he chose are not that right but these are right but see you can see now he wants eight thousand dollars to read plus test one these. week Why? one yeah, week to submit paperwork and two weeks for our approval it's, can't there's imagine. there have been Besides this, there's been several instances where this design was done, and, and they do this to drive up the cost. Sure. And you know they, they know that the, the quote for the job came in less, there's extra money there, and this is their way of grabbing it. And, and I, I can't understand why it, they would We have no recourse on this, Dick? No, the, the, the manufacturer's rep I thought was gonna be here on Monday was just a salesman. Right. The real person is gonna be here tomorrow he will have the answers, and I'd like to suggest to the board members that as many of them show up as possible so they can get fully informed. Right. I mean, if two of you or three or all three could be there, what time? I think that would be important. Nine o'clock. Tomorrow nine? Um, Morning. Mm -hmm. Well, the problem is we didn't post it, but... You can make it a continuation of this meeting. Yeah. We should. Are you oh, talking about having this board meet tomorrow morning at 9 a.m.? Be well, at the school. Or continue this at meeting until. I mean, I'm I'm tomorrow. I'm supportive of, of what Kip is doing. Yeah, and you have I delegated him as your voice Correct. on that board and approval authority for change orders. Um, there won't be a change order that comes tomorrow. No, this it, it won't be a it won't be a change order at all. What it's going to be is just this is what we're going to use. Mm -hmm. Well, it will be a change order. You will have to do a change order. But it, that's that's, that's the, the whole thing. thing. It I I don't want it to be a change order, Doug, because we're not changing it. These shingles meet his design thing. Why he is saying that he has to redo this is be, I, I will well, push him to explain that. Allow me, allow me to respectfully clarify. Um, the change order would be to direct the contractor to use a different shingle. And therefore, the shingles that are on site right now will have to be shipped back. There'll be a restocking fee. The new shingles will have to be ordered and sent to the site. That's true. That's the change. The designer's additional work 
should be another change order and should be a separate issue. You should be able to choose, uh, tell the designer that um, this does not represent a substantive change in the design. That's and right. And therefore, we do not mm -hmm. uh, approve a change order well, on the part of the design. That's is exactly where I'm going to Okay. Yeah. So, so we, we do have to do an official change order to tell them to use a different change. Makes sense. That has to happen, and then the cost has to be assessed in some Well, way. I mean, if, if, if it's $15,000 to restock, to me, it's worth it. But Carolyn, you have to under, also understand that if if there is a restocking charge, whether it's eight, twelve, or fifteen thousand dollars, these shingles are fifty thousand dollars less. They're less yes. expensive. Yes. Yes. Oh That's, my god. This is it. Just the, the more you get into this thing, the, the more you. Like, so not only I don't know how this guy sleeps at night. Wow. And so so even though if there will be a this cost to restock, product. exactly. Oh, man. But that's why architects do this because this is labeled a designer series. And because it's designer, you pay for it. Wow. Yeah, I would just like to find out, you know, from the GAF rep, um, the specs difference. Is there is there truly a reason? Is it just is it just aesthetics, or is it truly manufacturing? No, it it, it's like not. It's, and the um, didn't bring, but anyways, I, I have the warranty guarantees. Mm -hmm. They're Good both stuff. the same. Right. They're both forty-year shingles, but because it's they consider the school like a commercial. A Thirty-year. It's a thirty-year, but right. we also opted for their five-star warranty. So it's not just the material; it's labor and the whole oh, nine nice. yards. It's even disposal. Good. If they have to replace the shingles, you know, they cover. It, there's no cost to the town. That's good. You know, it's the shing yeah. shingle we put on there. I, but, I don't but see the how whole, there, I, I just don't see how there's any other. It I mean, seems how, how would you common sense to me. I would exactly right. Okay. Well, do your best tomorrow. I trust you. You know, um, to look at that, and if somebody else can. I have it. two mosquito meetings tomorrow, <laughs> and but I was going to try to squeeze in. Um, if Nancy Pachorik is listening, I was going to try to squeeze in coming to the senior picnic for a little yes, bit. Yes, me so too. So I, I, I can try to come to back you up on this, Kevin. If you're more than welcome, in, and, and I, I welcome you. But where, I, where is the I meeting? don't. It will be at the school. There, he'll have his hand full. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Uh, um, Doug and Dick, will you, will you both be able to be there? I can be there, yes. Yes. Okay, thank um, you. To be very clear, um, the memo from Kelly Claffey states that if the town does go with this, uh, she lists a number of items that she expects will happen, including uh, the contractor ordering the shingles in order to meet uh, the deadline. Uh, the designer needing a week to research the substitution and compile a summary report. Um, the MDM engineering needing a week to fit, submit final paperwork, including cost, product information, sample warranty, and that's the change order. That's essentially what they need is a week to do that. Um, and then finally, most importantly, the RDA making a presentation to the board in regard to these shingles. Uh, no, and to formally approve the change in design cut that scope. Out right yeah. now, we don't right. need that. We don't, and that's what my point that I'm going to make. The shingles that are on site do not meet the specification in his book. So I want an explanation from him why he's being so difficult about changing to the shingles that are in his specifications. And why we would need to go through I mean, this, all of this. And, then right. they can, and they and make them in the exact same color call. and everything. So. Unless I'm missing something, Dick. Let me just make one comment because, and I'm not even <laughs> sure about this, but I don't know where the reimbursement of the MSBA stands with any of this, and that that needs to be addressed. Okay, I don't know where they stand. I don't know what the delay means. If there's a delay in school opening or anything in like that, that's why I'm trying to point out that more than one member of the select board should be there because if there's something that needs to be decided or done or something clarified, you have more than one person there to support that. I mean, I understand that Kip is your spearhead point, but he can only bring back to you then to have a vote on doing whatever you're going to do. Okay. Okay. I guess I would like us to vote 
to move forward with this. So if a decision can be made tomorrow. That, I, I think, that I think it's, so. It's but the delay, done. also, so you guys understand, the delay will only come from RDA because the shingle transfer is not going to make a difference. The new shingles can be here Friday. If, if the contractor wants them tomorrow, orders them tomorrow, they can be here Friday. But they're not in, at a place to install the shingles quite yet anyway. Right. But it, as far as changing shingles, will not delay this at all. It's, it's only RDA. the RDA thing, and that's that's going to be the argument tomorrow. Okay. Well, then I make a motion um, that we move forward with this suggestion of the, the these shingles, the laminated shingles, mm -hmm. versus this. And um, the only way I'd, <clears throat> the only revision to that would you be just it. oh well, just pending on. Before I before I second that um, that motion, I would just want to make sure, pending on this meeting, whatever specifications come out, if there's some s solid reason, which none of us can foresee, as to why we have to stay with the other shingle other than aesthetics, um, that's my only concern. So okay, so what you want to do is um, you want to second the motion. Okay, second the motion. And then for our discussion right now is. We need, we need to worry about, um, you know, impacting the SBA um, reimbursement, mm -hmm. anything that would screw up the schedule. Right. But what we're saying is that we're going to move forward with this right now officially as part of the minutes, mm -hmm. unless there are some impacts that we're not aware of. Correct. And that's that was the okay. direction is that you have that we want you to have the authority to do that. By voting this tonight, there is no delay. You, if, exactly. If we can sort this out tomorrow, then we need. Yeah, we we should. I would say by ten o'clock it should be resolved. So. Okay. Yeah. I so want to point out one thing. I think you should get from the Gap Shingle representative something in writing right. to clarify all this. That's okay? kind of. Like not yeah, just verbal. If you're going to do anything, right. it needs to be in writing. I agree. That's a good. Remember that, good. Carolyn. Things yes. need to be in writing. I agree 100%. <laughs> um, so I make a motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, so to continue on that. Shingle, I, mm -hmm. So to, to direct. So we uh, need in writing whatever is agreed on. As I, well. I, I think that we have it already because. You know, they, they label it the legal stuff. And it, in this warranty, it talks about the whole five-star thing. It talks about um, you know, the warranty, uh, the, the whole nine yards. The only difference is in this letter from GAF to um, Jeff Yost is that it does state the name Slate Line. But if you read the language of the manufacturer, both the Slate Line and the Timber Line are both included in it. So, um, see, this is the input. Let me just check real quick. Okay, this is the warranty that we got, the Gold Pledge Limited Warranty. Uh, and it's a 30 year for material non prorated coverage, uh, tear off the whole nine yards. And this is for their shingle product line, not specifically any one of them, for all of them. Okay. And they're all the same. But we can definitely get that clarified from the uh, gentleman yeah. tomorrow. And that would be part of the paperwork, I think. Yeah. That maybe they're talking about. It's well, just we, making we, sure that yeah, we already the, have this. Um, I, this is a copy. I'm not sure who gave this to me, but I've had this. I think uh, the they piece just have to substitute the name, and uh, everything else is only the same. in that one page. Yeah. But right. The other pages actually don't reference it. Okay. The point I want to make is when we're all gone. A few years from now, what do you mean? Some, I'm going to be in 30 years some quicker this again. than the others, that we want a okay. file that you can walk over to 10 years from now, so be it 15, pull the file out and have every yes. single piece of paper that makes these people follow our warranty mm -hmm. that was guaranteed, warranted, whatever. We don't want to get in a situation where we don't even know what brand are on the roof. Right. Right. Well, that's yeah. and, and further that's explanation that there's a lot of layers to this, it seems. Um, that another reason for changing to the better shingles, because when this first all started coming about, I thought, well, 
what difference does it make what shingle as long as we have that warranty if the sure. know, less the slate line fail we're going to have them come back and do it again the big question is what happens in 20 years if it fails if GAF had filed bankruptcy and started under another name our guarantees out the window we get nothing so knowing that the uh, Timberland shingle will last you don't longer. You have to bond that. It's happened many a times where they and they open up under the same name because they're doing business as GAF, but their name might be Global Shingle Company USA, or even worse, they go to Taiwan and they're just doing business as GAF. So to the general public, you know, the they company know. keeps right on rolling. You know, the image is all the same, but even certain bankruptcy proceedings. Even if the company stays in business, can cause a break where a warranty no longer has to be honored. Right. So, so it's it's worth the argument. Yes. Yeah, yes. it's definitely worth trying, trying to get. Um, if I may, because they requested a response in writing, um, I Don't worked see up a, tomorrow. <laughs> well, no. It has to be in writing. Um, so the board has approved the change to this to the. Uh, Timberline HD shingle. Did we just vote that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep, you did vote that. Okay. Um, with the understanding that the shingle is an, as is and as equal per the contract documents, which means it'll work, um, that the change will not affect the ability of the contractor to meet the Friday, August 26th substantial completion deadline, that it will not substantially change the design or specifications, and that there will be a cost for the return and restock of the shingles already received on site. But we yep. do. We do not feel that there needs to be a $7,800, you know, study on, on we switching We do not these require two. a meeting. Yeah, we don't require a meeting and we don't require um, all of that extra work to just swap out the shingle. Okay, so my next paragraph is, as the new design meets the original, the new shingle meets the original specifications, reason suggests that no change in design is necessary. Therefore, the board is requesting clarification in regard to RDA's role in this decision and the necessity for any additional meetings, presentations, or cost. Right, yes. Uh, please notify the board through KIP if any of these conditions are not accurate or if there are further issues and concerns. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yep, absolutely. That was good to me. Printing now, and you can sign it. Put it in yes. the Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll try to be there tomorrow. Um, okay. So, so other Robert? than that, every, everything seems to be on time and under budget. Is that correct, Dick? And Kip? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you one question. How many select people are going to be at the meeting tomorrow? Two of us. At two? Least. At least two. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to back you up, Dick. It's not me. It's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I could get you on that one. Okay. Um, thank you, Dick. I really appreciate you coming in. Next up is Barbara. Thank you again for coming in, Barbara. Um, you're going to give us a little bit of update. You're going to make a comment on the retirement and some HR expenses. This okay. is Thank you. To clarify the expenses related to the South County EMS. Yes, that is correct. Yes, I believe I'm here to explain um, our reserve fund transfer request yes. for Absolutely. the budget of last year and how we ended up running short. Um, I guess I'll back up to the budget process. Um, the Franklin County Regional Retirement System issues us um, an assessment, so we know exactly what our bill is going to be. Um, not all budgets are put together that way, so this is very convenient. From the budget, um, from the bill invoice, we typically project what the um, entities that we cost out to um, will be. So that is a projection. So we have um, the South County uh, EMS now, and the year we're talking about was was that the first year or there's. It was first new. Few it was new. It was new. <laughs> so working together, um, their budget sometimes wasn't even ready when you know when we we're anyway. And uh, wastewater treatment and the senior center. So we cost out those um, retirement costs and, and build them out to them. So the year that we're talking about, we had the uh, Franklin County um, Regional Retirement Bill, and then when we got the South County EMS budget. Um, the line item for payroll and for the budget, the payroll drives what we cost out. It's approximately 
um, of payroll is what the assessment is for county retirement. So the um, amount for payroll and therefore the amount for the assessment to the retirement um, was not met at the end of the year. They didn't fulfill um, payroll to that degree and therefore the assessment of retirement wasn't what it was. Unfortunately, we, we had um, taken that off the cost factor. So I was only gonna say they, I don't exactly know what the numbers were, but say um, Zach had $50,000 for county retirement. And in actuality, it came out to 25,000. That's all we can bill him is 25,000, leaving our budget underfunded by, because we had taken the whole amount. We don't typically do it that way. We typically project but in this particular year. Well, because it was a startup year. It was. Everybody was estimating everything. payroll. And in fact, yeah. they, they had, did not hire, right. did not use that payroll. Not knowing that we wouldn't make it up to that point. They were and expecting then, right. to hire exactly. more people. So that's how we, um, okay. we, we sat down this year, um, the three of us, Zach and Brenda and myself, to, and, and figured out all of the budget items. So um, I'm, I'm entirely confident that that won't happen again. And, um, would we then with that with that i don't know how the, the accounting works but with that amount of money we're in the hold mm -hmm. would that get divided out um equally among all parties that partake in the retirement for the balance or do we just no it's a budget it item for the, for our town so okay. you know like i say it's it's almost five hundred thousand. i think it's like 461 or something like that okay. so so that's the budget and then we just figure that we're going to get reimbursed a, a little bit from these um other um, yep. entities that you know serve other towns so right. we build them out of portion i mean so the bill is our bill right. we're going to pay it uh, we do no get offset what. a little bit by these okay. other things so because yeah. we didn't get offset what we projected we would get offset I and mean, that really should have been our cost to begin with we should have you so know, it was our it bill. should have been our bill to it's, begin it was with. our bill it was yeah. our bill to yeah. begin with exactly. we just didn't apportion it right. exactly okay yeah um if we had known that there would be less employees on the ems side Mm -hmm. When it came time to make that calculation for right. the percentage, right. you would have said then it would have been more. Yeah, we would have been more accurate. Cautious we wouldn't have had the under yeah. uh, underrun, mm -hmm. um, and broadly speaking, the town still would have paid more. Yeah, in the end, still we, have to pay the bill. Yeah, yeah. Still we overprojected pay, still what we thought we would get reimbursed from them. Right, and they just didn't sell. fulfill their. Yep. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Makes All right. Sense. I just want to make sure that that was. Clear. I hope that makes sense. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yes. Um, you wanted me to speak also about um, eligibility under county retirement? Well, um, Dylan was here at our last meeting and he was worried mm -hmm. that we were setting ourselves up for retirement. Um, I certainly understand his position on that, but mm -hmm. um, well, it was my understanding that I didn't think we were eligible. So I just wanted to clarify with you mm -hmm. that we're not eligible. I can see maybe briefly, I can see maybe where the confusion is, um, and, and I don't know dates perfectly, but there's been kind of an evolution of uh, eligibility as far as county retirement. I mean, there used to be a day if you worked, you, you could contribute to county retirement. And then at some point they said, you have to at least make $5,000 a year. You know, you can't right. be part of the county retirement. And then since then, I think it was in 2009, they said you have to work um, you have to be hired on a regular basis for 20 hours to be eligible for county retirement. So board members um, making more than $5,000 doesn't make you eligible. You have to be um, hired for, not, not just randomly working 20 hours a right. week, you know, on a regular basis, that's your job. You You're work 20 hours or more, then you're eligible for county retirement. Yes. So no, as board members, you wouldn't be. Even though we may work more than 20 hours a week. <laughs> I was just going to say, <laughs> but I we were 20 we hours a week. We weren't hired, yeah. that, that makes sense. <laughs> because yeah. that comes into play sometimes with on-call people, mm -hmm. sure. where yes. they spike up over 20 hours a week, and maybe sometimes for quite some time, because they're eligible, you know, they're available to answer calls and, and, and what have you. But even, even then, they're not eligible. Okay. Um, so. Because they're not Doug, I, I, since Dylan didn't come here tonight, can you just send a quick email to him that we are, Clarifies. yeah, clarify and that we are here because we love our community mm -hmm. and we really want to make a difference that even though we work more than 20 hours, which you guys can now verify <laughs> yeah, on a regular this year basis. We're, we're going to be um, submitting we're not um, the end of the year payroll numbers to Zach. So um, by January, he will know what we are going to cost out to him. So okay. he'll have the, a solid number in his budget, which will help South County EMS as well as us. Um, 
county retirement kind of bills backwards. So that's the only one oh, that we can we can be definitive about what the assessment will be. Oh, so okay, that's perfect. what we've learned going forward. Mm -hmm. Great, <laughs> Barbara. Thank you very much. Okay, um, thank you. I think you set people straight on this. If, if anyone wonderful. wants any more detail, they can certainly no. um, contact me. So do you have any updates you want to share with us? Um, well, I always have updates. <laughs> Great. I could uh, update you on a lot of things, but <laughs> everything's going extremely well as far as collections. Um, the year finished up very strongly. We um, just received notification from Bond Council that we've got the green light on our roof borrowing. Um, so that didn't entail any further hopes, thankfully. Yep. Um, and so uh, as the project comes along um, and the cash flow, I'll figure out when we'll do our first borrowing, I think. Um, okay. And based on how much we need and we'll, we'll discuss how you want to handle the, the borrowing. How, I have a quick question, if you yes. know. How does that work as far as the payment? Do the bills come through the state to us or yeah, directly I, to us? Um, I should be receiving electronic fund deposits by, um, for the reimbursements. I haven't gotten any yet. And I was, we haven't filed in for any yet, though. Oh, okay. But, yeah, okay. that's just, that process is just. Where, where do the bills, like, from RDA, Pink, and MDM mm -hmm. come from? Our, do they submit um, them to us directly or through the state? They go through the state, and there's actually kind of a whole software process that um, our, what do you call it, OPM? Our OPM is, is right. submitting. Right. Um, Brenda and I went down to Boston and kind of had a tutorial on it so that we can also sign on and follow along. Um, but I'm kind of happy that somebody more technical um, that's going to review these bills and, and what have you is able to submit because you have to say, oh, this is a, a building item. This is a fundamental right. item. This is a construction item. I mean, I we wouldn't know. Right. Be um, but, before that process happens, the bills are processed like mm -hmm. regular bills. Yes. They're paid out of the town's coffers. Right. Um, yes. So plus, we, we will yeah. see the invoices. Right. So the invoices um, do come here first. They do. Doubt. They okay. do. But right. as far as um, we were first talking about the reimbursement process, which goes through that software, and that's done by the OPM. But we'll be able to follow along with the invoices and us um, being able to sign on the site. If I'm so, not too much of a pain, would it yeah. be a problem if I came into your office at a time when they start coming in to review those? Um, sure. I don't think it's a problem. I, we haven't seen them yet, so I don't right. know what kind of problem it would be. <laughs> Broadly but, speaking, the board um, does have the opportunity to review them I was because they're part of the payables warrant. You yes, but, that uh, that that is your purview to go over any of the invoices. Well, so they'll be in the regular warrant. Yes, you yes. print it out mm -hmm. in the regular warrant. Yeah, it's the only way we can pay. Anything. Anything. Watch yeah. Yeah, you don't I just, have to. I just from what things that I've been seeing, I'd like to watch this. Sure. Well, it should Great. be you know um, mm -hmm. the when we get the warrant. Right, but, but if at that time you know. Just if I see a figure or something and there's not a lot of information oh, yeah, attached to it, that's true. if I see it and something think, sticks out to me, then I yeah. can do a little research and find out why or what happened. Yeah. So I can. I think our yeah. idea is to kind of keep a file on that stuff anyway. Even though we'll be submitting the invoices and the payables, I think we are, we're looking to keep a copy so that we have a kind of a whole mm -hmm. history of, okay. of the whole project. So and right. before it's, the town gets those invoices, they go before the building committee, mm -hmm. the, the roof building committee. Who's the roof building committee? You're on it. The, well, that's really Patty and, that's, and, and but the OPM and so on and so forth. I, You'll have that I've never seen anything that says there's a roof because building committee. Because they haven't. Committee, so. mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I apologize. That, but, but they will go, go for that before that committee for initial review um, and comparison to what was actually done. You gave me a copy of the contract from the Mass School Building Authority that I reviewed. But did we get... Uh, did contract from MDM and from RDI, RDA and from Pink. Who has those contracts? I would inquire with Pink. If Pink has those, uh, Why, would Patty have those? I think she might. She might. Yeah. Yes, she, she may. She, I, she's mm. supposed to be. Um, I I may. I uh, I'm just trying to rack my brain to see if we have it. Mm. If we have them, they would be with Brenda, um, with the accountant. All right. Well, um, I'll reach out to Patty and see. Sure. Has um. Yeah. Is there what's the process for um, response? You know, um, reviewing of of our experience with the contractor, the designer, and the you know the architect and the OPM and and. There's actually a series of mandatory uh, assessments and reviews that must be done by the town. Um, so this board will have an opportunity to, in detail, report on their experience 
with uh, the contractor, with, uh, I'm not sure if it goes to the level of subcontractors, but with the contractor and with the OPM. Um, and that reporting is actually required the designer, I was, uh, by the MSBA. I, I, I wanted to have some, I mean, it seems like we are having some issues with the RDA, and I think we should be documenting them so that we can respond to a, mm -hmm. I mean, is, is that part, just because they, I mean, uh, they were picked for us, I mean, I, we were assigned them. I might be able to shed a little light. I've already reached out to the Mass School Building Authority and I've uh, spoken with the Matt Connolly, who's second in charge of all this. And so um, I'm going to keep him the price of things Good. going forward. But yeah. In my, I guess I just would like to give them a heads up that we're having some issues. Maybe. Uh, I, I mean, well, maybe we'll wait. They might till know that by now. <laughs> maybe, maybe um, we'll we'll see what this meeting yeah. is. But yep. if this meeting is not satisfactory tomorrow, then we need to start having a little bit of pushback because that's how how things happen. Yep. Before I called Melissa. <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Thank you. All right. I mean, I would, I'm not trying to step on your toes. No, that's fine. That's fine. I, I'm, that's fine. I've had significant enough concerns based on your observations that I think we should make some alternative plans um, to, to have I some think tomorrow is going to be a big day because yeah. we'll, we'll see okay. what kind of resistance we get from this guy. Great. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Barb. Thank you so okay. much. I, I really appreciate you coming yeah, in. I'm sorry time. that you had Anytime. to come in to talk about I this, but um, I think there was the two issues were significant enough that... Okay, I'm happy to. Anytime. Yeah. It was great. really great, great that you night. clarified. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate all your work on the roof and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I really do. That's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Have a lovely evening. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Sarah Let's Nancy. have the library group come up and give us an update on what's happening. Um, thank you for waiting, everybody. Um, bring up chairs. The more the better. You the fans on, right, Doug? Yeah, I can see there's quite a crowd. Thank you. Numbers. You want to be close to the mic? Thanks. So, uh, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I, I think the best thing to do is introduce yourself. That's exactly what I was going okay. to do, yes. Thank you. My name is Judy Holmes. I am the co-chair of the Library Planning Committee, which is a committee that was appointed by the Select Board. Um, and um, uh, we're here as a follow-up to um, the uh, special meeting where we asked for permission to apply for the grant from the uh, Mass Board of Library Commissioners. Um, at this time, we now have a preliminary budget um, and that's what we're here to share with you. Um, and um, uh, uh, we have several people up here who, who can speak knowledgeably about these things. Um, Nancy Maynard is the chair of the trustees. Um, Dan Pallotta is the owner's project manager, who you may remember from before. Mm -hmm. And Phil O'Brien is uh, the uh, architect, the designer. And we also have, yes, I'm sorry, I'm good. Yes. And, Ralph and, we, and Sarah Woodbury, who's the library director. And we have um, oh, Smith, okay. sorry, uh, board of trustees. And Kathy? Kathy yeah, O'Rourke, right here. Kathy O'Rourke, board, 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 board of trustees. So you all have one of these handouts? Yes. yes. Okay, I'm going to turn the floor over then to um, Dan. Okay. And Phil. And Phil. I don't want you to be picking on the OPMs. I picked a bad night to come. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you recall, when we came before the town meeting, we talked about <clears throat> the schematic design, and the schematic design was being costed. This is the result of the schematic design being costed. Uh, as we go forward and apply for the grant, which will be uh, in January of 2017, the chart that's before you will be the chart that will accompany uh, the design. And I wanted to, we wanted to walk you through it so that you understood it. Um, it, it is as simple as we can make it. And there is plenty of backup should the board need the backup. We'll be happy to give you backup to every penny if you'd like. 
um, but it, it basically starts and Phil, you can you can uh, pipe in whenever whenever I make a mistake here. It starts with the GC total cost estimate of five million twenty five thousand seven hundred ninety one. Of that, four point eight three five would be an allowable grant calculation cost. If you notice, there are two columns: one that t tabulates to purple, and one that tabulates to pink. Um, we have escalation in there till May of 2021. So we don't know when we're going to get the grant, uh, but we're allowed to carry four years of escalation. So we carried four years of escalation. If we're in the first grant round, there won't be that much escalation and that number just will never, never get appropriated. Uh, we have an FF&E budget. FF&E stands for furniture, fixtures, and equipment. In today's world, that's really furnitures furniture, fixtures, and IT. Uh, we have the design OPM and the clerk costs for on-site management. Uh, we have some miscellaneous expenses such as testing and, and moving the library out and moving the library back uh, from a location that we don't know of yet. And project contingencies which are, are for unknowns that we may find during construction and or during design. That brings us to the two colored boxes. The pink box is the one that's the important box. The pink box uh, indicates uh, what would be allowable under the grant program. And if you follow the pink box down to the next pink box, it's the starting line for the grant calculation. The first $3 million worth of your grant is covered 60% by the Commonwealth. The second $3 million is covered by 45% and up to 15 million, but we're only going to need 463,000, uh, is covered 40%. You also have a need factor based on some super secret formula down at DOR that determines a, a town's uh, uh, wealth and need based on housing and jobs and, and how many kids have school lunches and so on and so forth. Your need factor is 6.62%. That is a percentage of the three numbers that are directly above it. So if you added the 1.8, the 1.3, and the 463 together and multiplied it by 6.62, you get that additional grant amount. Uh, we anticipate we're going to get uh, the minimum lead, uh, and the minimum lead would be $100,000 on top of the other grant amounts. So we're projecting that the town will receive $3.952 um, million from uh, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners when the grant program is announced and that the total project cost will be 7.872, which is the purple box. Simple math, uh, deduct the grant from the total project cost and the balance it needs to be raised, appropriated, or fundraised, uh, or a combination of all of uh, 3.919 million. Was I clear? Actually, yes, um, but I was wondering if you could just go over the timeline with me again. Um, on uh, January 2017 is the... That's when we're going to apply. The, grant pro the grants will be announced at the end of July 2017. Okay. Uh, they're expecting about 34 libraries to participate in this grant round. Uh, the grant rounds every six to eight to ten years, depending on how many projects are in the uh, queue. And they're expecting to fund between eight and ten libraries in the first year. So we have probably a one-third chance that we'll be funded in the first year. If not, uh, we'll be funded in the second year or the third year. We don't know. But we've carried the uh, escalation out to the midpoint of construction, which would be in year four. And how, how long do we have to um, appropriate the funds after we're selected? You'll get notified when you when you get the Powerball. When the Powerball comes out, uh, you'll get notified, and it's six months that you have to do the appropriation. So the the issue I see with that is that it would land us. So you say say it shows up July seventeenth. Our our ball comes up. Mm -hmm. We're the ones. So that would require a special town meeting to a, a special to do that town meeting to appropriate. Of a, annual town meeting? It would be a special town meeting to do an appropriation, uh, and if it's under the levy limit, that would be it. Yeah. If, it's, or if it needs to be excluded from the levy limit, you'd need to not have a special town meeting and a, an election. Yeah. Um, 
based on your experience, um, because I think that's one of the reasons why everyone um, is very appreciative of your services, is you have lots of experience. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we're going to fall in this timeline? That's a crystal ball question. I really, I really don't know. Um, it, it, they, you, you just don't know. There are a lot of libraries that are in tough shape in Massachusetts. So, I mean, they, we don't know. True. Um, in, in January of 2017, when they announce who's going to get the grant, they also July. July um, they also prioritize them. So they they rank them. Um, and so we'll know next July where we're ranked. We'll know if we're going to be in the first round. If we're, you know, if we're in one through five, then we know we're going to be ready to go. If we're in ten to fifteen, we know it's not going to be for another year or two. Okay. I I, I don't want you to take this as an anti-library stance by any means, but um, you know, one of my priorities has always been to try to address some of the needs of the seniors. And now that we've had this 40 year, 20 year need met for, by the garage, our, ne our next focus really has to go to the seniors. So we're hoping to be moving on the seniors, you know, the senior center issues and, and maybe even senior housing within, within the year. So it would be very difficult for us as a town, I think, to move into the library projects if, if we're on the top. Um, I'm, I'm just being quite honest. Um, you know, there's only so much pie. And so, I mean, hopefully, for everybody's sake, mm -hmm. it would be lovely to be in the second tier or, you know, the second uh, numbers. So it's not we don't have to act within a year. Because, number one, I think there, there was a few issues we were talking about on the design that it would be lovely to have a little bit of time to talk about, you know, sustainability, like what, how, you know, how this addition, what, how would we absorb it into the operation of our town and, you know, those kind of costs, but also just um, so that we have a chance to raise money for this and, and, and talk about, um, you know, the, the library needs, because I, I think there is some confusion or, or misinformation or not enough information out there of, of what the library is really doing, and and I think, you know, having you know having some time to generate support as mm -hmm. well as understanding how we're going to finance this would be lovely. And I'm I'm not I'm, I'm certainly not trying to be negative by any means, but I'm just trying to be realistic that I, I would worry that if we hit the Powerball next year, <laughs> that this is this this would. Uh, run in a little bit to what we were trying to focus in on the seniors. I mean, we as a as a select board haven't even really had the opportunity to focus on what what our. I mean, we we can't yet, but we're hoping to in the next few months and 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 come up with a very quick turnaround using as soon as Kip's done with the roof, we're moving on to the senior center. No, I'm still knee deep in the sewer plant. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the sewer plant the sewer. out there, which is huge, huge, huge issue. So, um, but maybe they should go to the place for the sewer place because they're going to pay for 100 percent of that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're hoping we're hoping yeah. we're hitting the Powerball in the sewer. So, um, uh, yes. So, so the board of trustees has been, you know, working in conjunction with the planning and design committee. And we've been, you know, looking and discussing over the past year and a half, you know, the other mechanisms to raise money. Right. And so, you know, we have uh, worked and we have interviewed a variety of different fundraising um, professionals um, so that we could move forward on that front to start a campaign so that we're prepared Perfect. for that. Um, you know, and we're ready to, you know, we. We were able to secure that person this past spring, but we wanted to wait till um, the project was at the stage it is now, and we have you know the figures, so we really know what we're needing to do. Right. And so our next step is um, you know to to finalize that contract, and we're prepared to go forward to do that, and then you know make some next steps and de determine what a capital campaign could be um, to at least start to you know have some. Um, funds available for the project. Oh, and Nancy, that's perfect. And that that's what great. I was hoping to encourage you all to do is that 
um, you know, moving forward as a community, you know, let's put our heads and, together. And, and all that it. comes with community education, continuing right. education, Absolutely. continuing Absolutely. to work with the schematic and, and those kinds of things so that, um, you know, we don't want to stand still in this period of application and then, um, you know, have a, a problem arise if we're in the first stage. But if we're in the second stages, you know, we will be methodically have been working along the continuum and, you know, could be in a good place. And then we would be able to determine, you know, what do we need from the town or, or whatever. And if I'm not mistaken, we could also go back and ask for a waiver if we're in the first group to maybe be deferred. Is that correct? It, it has happened, that's for sure. Be main, mainly because of the, uh, Trying to fund a project this size in a special town meeting is going to be really tough. Mm -hmm. We um, understand that. So, <laughs> any way we can kind of get a little bit of time to educate the public and build that grassroots support for it, because I'd love to see it succeed. Um, work on the design, try and get that under control a little bit, and. Um, and that is our intent. After yeah. we shared the figures with you, that the, the trustees in the committee will be going you know, to the Finance Committee and to mm -hmm. the Capital Improvement Committee so that we start methodically, you know, making um, the town committees aware of the projects um, so that they have it. accurate information. We really want to make sure that we have accurate information out there in the community right. um, because there's right. nothing worse than misinformation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nancy, for that because I, I really appreciate the fact you understand where we're coming from. It was, you know, I, I, we certainly don't want people to per be perceive that you know, it's negative, but we are. And we're working we along the concerned. continuum of what the Mass Board of Library Commissioners process is, because sure. as, as yeah. Daniel said, we may be another eight, 10 years, and then we would have to go back into the planning and design phase all over again. And we've spent, right. you know, a year and a half of the committee working very hard, visiting libraries, working to come up with the schematics, revising them. Yeah. Um, so we have a lot of community service go on through the library to accomplish that. Right, so I have a question. This makes sense. The Tilton Library does not belong to the town of Deerfield. How do you propose using public money to fund a, a separate entity like that? Uh, we we have um, there isn't um, it doesn't matter. A lot of libraries have received grants um, uh, in towns that the um, town does not own the building. Um, it's not an issue with the Board of Library Commissioners. And it's not a, you, so you can, through taxation, you can raise money to give to another organization? Well, the um, library is supported by taxation. Yeah, I know. That's maybe not another whole question, too. But well, um, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. It, it's, it's a good question. It, I, I've never had that question asked to me before. Even, maybe even maybe somebody knows. Well, I wasn't the, the document that's here. Yeah. Um, or libraries are sort of a, a, a hybrid. They're public as well as some have some assets of a, a private corporation. Or, um, and that's, that's the history of trustees at, in, of many libraries in many towns. But um, as you know, most of the trustees are elected by the citizens of the field. And we perform a public function, which is to you know, have a library for all the town's people and we safeguard that library, we safeguard the town, and we really are fiduciaries for the library. So, um, well, there might be, it may be considered, a, you know, a hybrid, the trustees may have some private responsibilities. It's really very public and really for on behalf of the town. We, we do, um, I mean, they are responsible for the budget they, they go through the budget process and we mm -hmm. vote it at town meeting and um, we insure the building <laughs> and we actually are named as owners of the building on the insurance policy. So, that I mean, if the, if, the burn, if, the, if the building burned <coughs> down, then we would be, the town would be reimbursed. The, well, I, no, you might, I think if so. If you want to ask your lawyer because it, Maybe I, I will to, because we better check that I out. I don't know how to explain we it, better, so we, we, we want take, to make sure take that. my explanation. Is it's it's illegal for someone to insure something that they don't own, and so if the town of Deerfield is named on that insurance policy, the building burns down, and they go to the registry of deeds, say, the "Town doesn't own that. We don't have to pay you." Could I could I respond I mean, to that? Sure. Um, um, 
when this question came up, um, I, I did a little bit of research by looking at the town records. And um, in 1913 or 1914, 1914. in the town report, um, the, the town was asked if they would like to accept the gift of a library from the Tilton, Chauncey Tilton um, bequest. And um, a couple of years later, um, the town did accept it. Um, and so there was a question of, um, the question of whether who owns the building has come up. It's not clear um, who exactly owns the building, but um, it has been, um, it's been, as Cindy said, it's been a public library, and it was that the town did vote to accept the gift of a public library. So, and it's been operating as a public library for nearly 100 years. Um, then I would have thought that somewhere in that 100 years they would have transferred ownership because the Registry of Deeds is what's going to drive this. And the, ring, the reason I bring this up is because if you all go through all this process and somebody else brings this up, it stops it dead in the tracks. I mean, I don't know all the details, but I've heard many times the city of Springfield's gone through a very similar thing where they had to close libraries move it because they couldn't get funding with it because the library was not owned by the city. And they had a set of problems. And, I'm just curious about this. I'm just starting the conversation, so you know we'll it can do be a little homework. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. I mean, no, that's, that's, um, it's a great it, question. It again. It's a great if you question. Might, you know, I mean, if you give it once, you could give it again. I don't know. Maybe that's not the direction of the trustees. Well, I just didn't know if that might be a reason, a way to. I guess a lot of towns. Um, this, um, as I said, a lot of towns. This has happened. Sometimes the um, town purchases the building for a dollar. Right. Um, um, I was told that um, by the um, grant, my, our grant advisor, that um, that it's not a problem. That if it turns out that that the trust, you know, the town does not own the building, she would put me in touch with other towns that um, had the same um, issue. And um, apparently, it's not a, a not a big problem. That's that was well, my understanding that that I conveyed to Doug when Doug um, asked me about it. And, um, <coughs> Doug, I would like you to please check with our insurance company and make sure there is no issue. Um, please put that on the tickler list to do tomorrow morning. Yeah. If something go wrong, it would be awful. It would be terrible. So, I do not think so. That I mean, I, I would assume that we're the you know fiduciary interest. Right. So there shouldn't be any issue. But. Let's awful. make a statement. Let's get a statement in writing that there is no issue if there is a loss. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, according to the town's assessor's records, the library owned by the Tilton Library Trust, um, it shows a sale date in, in December of 2001 um, for a price of $99, which I assume that is just a full time transfer. So the, the, there's no reference to what Sarah's research came up with? Um, well, we could go back and do uh, checking on that as well. Um, but that's the latest I point. That that's what this show. Um, I do know that you can look up that transaction, the 2001 transaction to found the deed, transferred in the registry of deeds. Who, um, who was it transferred from? From the Tilton Library Trust. To the Tilton Tr Library right. Trust. Yeah. So it could be that there was an error in the original deed. Or and they need to... Name. Update no it. I see. I see. Along those lines. Yep. Um, it could also be that the assessors are with their own team. Okay. We should clarify. Um, what happened with ownership when we did the other edition? That didn't seem to be a problem. Um, if no one raises the question, then there's usually not a problem. I would think. I. I. I I'm just saying that probably no one even thought to ask the question. I just think we need to do a little research. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. I, I do way. not think okay. that this is this an is issue. Not, yeah, a lot I mean, of I, libraries were granted by benefactors at the turn of the century. Yeah. So this is not a not a uh, something that's going to be. Uncommon. No, it's something that legally we could yeah. um, figure out. Talk talk to Lisa about and sort mm -hmm. out. Yeah. So just put a phone call in for her too as well, Doug, just to see. How, how we move forward on this, if there's any question. Um, and, and maybe tomorrow morning you can get that, whatever research Sarah has come up with, you could just funnel that information. And if Lisa needs any information, she yeah. can okay. call me. She's got me on speed dial. Thank you. <clears throat> 
I don't think it will be an issue because most library, you know, I mean, this has been around for 100 okay. years, and it's been part of our, but I absolutely agree that let's straighten it out. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. So can I just say a little something about the 100th year anniversary while you, you're yes, bringing that please. up? I think that's um, good. Because it has been so, around um, for 100 years. Uh, we have uh, formed a 100th anniversary committee um, because um, November will be the 100th anniversary of the library, and we're looking to have a, a rededication ceremony, and then we are working to develop a um, series of events to go on um, just about every month throughout the year and then wrap up um, in the following 2017 with um, sort of a nice dinner or whatever. Um, but, you know, I think it will be a really nice way to, you know, really spotlight the library while we're in the midst of this campaign. Um, the different types of activities will, you know, take in all different populations that enjoy the library, speakers, children's um, activities and things like that, art shows, um, auctioneers coming in to appraise things. So, um, you know, it's really going to be a, a really exciting year for the library. Well, I think that's wonderful. Um, I, I know that you're here tonight, so um, I well, would want to make sure that we have any questions um, answered. Uh, Kip, do you have any questions that just off the top of your head? Okay. Um, I, I guess um, one of the questions I had is, um, um, we have this is your first projection, obviously. We we go into the so for for you, are you doing anything more between now and January of 2017 with the library or meeting meetings with? Community on, groups, on costs, or uh, this is what will go in for the grant application. Okay. All right. The schematic design, uh, we'll, it'll be cleaned up for presentation, but the design is the design, and this is the cost that's going to go in with it. There's a lot of backup that goes with it. Um, the, the application will be about this thick when we submit it, uh, with a whole bunch of information with. Costs being just one of one section of it. Uh, after we receive the grant and you've made your appropriation, we begin the design development and construction document phase. And as we're going down that path, we will be doing additional estimates to make sure that we are staying within the parameters of the vote of the town of Deerfield, uh, or, or better than. Uh, mm -hmm. Depending on what year it is, we, you know, escalation won't be nearly as, as large either. So. There are <clears throat> other estimates that will be done both at the design development and the construction document phase, but not before we submit the grant application. Okay. So all the community work would be just based on this right here, and we will just continue discussing this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. 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 To have more community forms so that people can learn about more intricacies of the library project. I mean, it would be nice if it was like the MSBA and every year you had the opportunity to submit a statement of interest and you get your project. Um, but it is every eight years at a minimum. Oh, oh no, and it's, absolutely. It just, you hit the cycle right right where you hit the cycle and um, we'll, we'll, ask the, we'll ask the questions on uh, a deferment as well as while we're working on the question of uh, ownership. And when, when do you, excuse me, when do you, um, when do we or a committee have the ability to work on the design again like the wall of glass um any other items yeah i actually I, th I thought it might be worthwhile to specifically address that question because i i believe kip you yeah he somebody agrees. brought that up and we yep. have our designer here who could talk to that very question so That'd maybe it might be worth just hearing from him about the yes. uh, energy efficiency and the use of the glass atrium okay um well, I assume you're all familiar with the design, and you're referring to that kind of link between the masonry original building and the, and the more masonry uh, right. chunk at the rear of the uh, of the proposed addition. Um, the idea of that of that glazed link is to create a kind of a soft link between uh, the two buildings, and it does a couple of different things for us. It it allows us to stand off from the existing building and let the existing building um, address the street the way it was kind of originally intended. We're going to do some restoration on the side of the building. What that uh, with the addition is now, I'm going to take that off. And restore those windows and so forth. What we're trying to do is really uh, leave the existing building have prominence, and we we're trying to take the majority of the bulk of the addition and push it back. And so, uh, to use a very kind of transparent link between that larger chunk in the back and in the in the 
in the piece in the front, the historic piece in the front, is a visual tactic. Um, the building will, we are, we are pursuing LEED certification, and so uh, the building will meet the energy code uh, that is current at the time, is what we're projecting when we, when we end up building the building. And then the LEED requirements will require us to better the code, and it's typically by something 20, 25, 30% mm -hmm. increase over the code minimums. Um, and so when you look at that glassy thing, it's, uh, number one, it is glass, but not all of it is transparent glass that you can look out, right? And so it's curtain wall like you might see on a, on a skyscraper, for example, so it's glass on the outside, but on the inside, a lot of it is wall with insulation in it and so forth. And so there are portions of it that you can see through. The rest of it will be insulated just like the rest of the building is insulated. Okay. So oh, that, that's, 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 yeah, that's a better explanation. So yeah. there'll be portions of that glass that we call spandrel glass, and so the yep. glass won't be see-through. There'll be a reflective film on the back side right. of it, um, uh, and there'll be walls behind it, and, and it's basically to disguise the insulation and the wall Correct. consistency and everything behind that. Um, and so it won't all be glass. And we understand that there's going to be people working next to those glazed, uh, and if it came all the way down to the floor, it might be cool, and right. and obviously glass has more, uh, less thermal resistance than, than typical wall systems, so it, it when when you're inside the building, from the outside, it may look kind of glassy and shiny and give us that visual break that we're looking for, but inside, when you walk through there, I don't know that you'd notice a big difference between that portion of the building and the other portions in terms of how much window uh, that you actually see. Yeah, our, our concern was that there was, we just maintenance for this building long term and heating um, sure. and cooling and cooling oh, and how much how much yeah. solar heat gain you get and how much you lose out on a big wall of glass uh, was is that on the north side as well it's it's on both sides of the both building sides, that visually yeah. so be, when we're coming up from both sides of the street the idea is is, is really when you look at that building is to is to stand alone now we could yeah. certainly uh, adjust uh, yeah and i'm need. not married to that idea and certainly yeah. it's your building and a good if, thought if, if yeah. the town doesn't like that idea and they'd rather do something else we're happy to look at those right. options uh that's what we'd have at this point ability and at there's some point. another we'll uh, have the ability and design development to, to work to, with you to on change that. things like yeah. That. yeah yeah that's, and, that's great and at the end of the day uh dan and i are going to get in our cars and drive out of here and it's going to be your building so we right. want to design it so that it meets your needs and yeah. the needs of the community that's great i'm happy you know, to take a look that's just so refreshing after just having some experience with a roof, so. We're not you. returning the roof. <laughs> <laughs> one one thing I wanted to say about the, design, the uh, uh, schematic, I saw that it had curved glass. Is that still going to stay the same? Curved glass. Yeah. At the top of that atrium, the glass curved, or is it straight up? Straight up. Straight, straight, straight up. up. We and don't and straight have any curved glazing in the building. Right. Right. It, one of the reasons they came up with um, this, this sort of way of, of joining the two buildings, the old and the new, is because we, we really wanted to have the library continue as it is now to be to have a flow from the outside to the inside. That we didn't want it just to be, you know, a building and you walk in. And there's a lot of it. There's events. There's things that take place outside. And so we we really wanted it to to to, to sort of have the feel of being outside. And the inside and bringing the outside to the in and the in to yeah. the out. So, part of the the idea of when you walk through, you see through to the other side, and you could you could pass through and get to the other side of the building to maybe some function that's going on out there yeah. or something that. And the, and then there's in in the in the back there's a way for the kids to get into the back door, right. you know, who may be coming across from the elementary Schools. school and stuff. So it's we, we from the planning committee one of the things we wanted was to be able to. To, to, to keep this link between the inside and the outside. And right. that was part of the way they came up with it. You know, I just want to say thank you for considering that the flow of kids might come from mm. the elementary school. I mean, that to me is a very um, practical kind of um, well, detail. The, the, the library, you know, serves all segments of the population. And so mm -hmm. we're really trying to think about as, as part of our um, original planning documents, you know, how how do different segments of the, of the population use the library? What are their needs? What are their space right. needs? And the thing we kept running up against is that there's just not enough space in the yeah. current library to do the things that a modern library needs to well, do. Well, having talked to Nancy at, you know, about uses, at, you know, addressing the kids that go after school yes. to the library yeah. is a huge yeah. is a huge thing. So uh, thank you. Jeff, did you have a question? Just three quick items. Sure. One is the handout that I see. Is that available online or not? 
Um, we can get you a copy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Sure, sure, absolutely. Sure, sure. Thank you very much. You want? Uh, number two, did I hear the figure right that after all the grants that we received them are applied, we still going to look at a balance of about three point nine million for the town? What a chill. Um, it, it's that that's the the highest end estimate because that um, be the end estimate. right because that includes the four years of escalation. Um, it also doesn't account for whatever funds are raised by the capital campaign, so that would reduce things as well. So and that, and, and it also includes a, a contingency fund which could also be reduced too. So that's the highest end. Can I clarify for clarification on something you just said? That includes four years of Escalation here. Escalation at twenty percent uh, is eight hundred fifty-three thousand dollars. Yes. I'm just I'm reading this right off the sheet. That is that represents four years of escalation. Yes. So if the project were chosen in year one. Yes. That number would be much less. That's correct. Or not there. At all. That's correct. Now, would, it, there'd be a portion of it be there because you're going to have you're right. going to have a design period before you get to bid, and the right. escalation number is. For midpoint of construction, so, so okay. we're targeting the midpoint of construction, which would be four years from now. Okay, as a hypothetical. Right. So okay. there's kind of we a, had to have a data. There's, there's kind of a minimum if you add it up. You'll, you'll have to take the, the time that, that the grants announced, the time that you vote, the design time, then there's bidding time, and then there'll be 12 months of construction so and so you're six scenario, months into that. Escalation is going to be two years. That's probably the best case. Yes, and, and, and if, if, we're, if we're really careful with our, with our design, we could keep the contingency costs down too, um, which means we could be knocking a million dollars off of this. Possible. Yeah. Yes. But it's also possible that you get a, that you get a grant award four years from now. <laughs> right. Right. And you're going to thank us that. for putting Oh, no, no. I, 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 case, I, now you're looking at a six-year escalation. And so there are four. Right, and so there are communities that I, I just want to put that sure. out there because yeah. there are obviously communities that are at the at the end, and yeah. you should know that ahead of time. Right, but um, but, right. but again, we'll we'll know that because they'll be they'll be ranking the the uh, so awards we'll next the July when they when they announce them. So we'll know where we where we are. Yeah. Yeah. The third item I have is: Has there been a study done uh, with concerns as far as the expansion of roughly I think nine thousand square feet? As far as maintenance costs, uh, operational costs, are you going to be looking to extend hours? Are you going to be looking to uh, add staff on that? Yeah, I guess those are some major considerations for the town. The, the, the first part of your question, which is related to construction, which would be maintenance and operational costs, uh, really depends on the systems that is chosen during the design development phase. So during the design development phase, uh, the systems will be chosen, the materials will be chosen, uh, which basically will determine how much maintenance you're going to do in a building. In other words, uh, some systems require a lot of maintenance, some systems do not require a lot of maintenance. Since we are going for LEED, one of the goals of LEED is as little maintenance as possible and as much energy efficiency as possible. So I'm sure we'll be on the lower end, but I can't give you a dollar figure. I, I can't throw a dot at it today. Okay. Uh, as for hours, you're going to have to ask the it, it, trustees. Um, um, just in, in, ter in terms of staff, the, when we were working on the design um, and also at the prompting of the MBLC, it's, it's designed so that um, it, it could be run by the same number of staff as there currently are. So there's a desk down on the, on the ground floor with a staff person. There's a desk up on the second floor. And from those two desks, you have sight lines to the whole, to the whole floor space. Sarah, you want to correct me? I think, Judy, I, I think that's what was, um, we had hoped for. But um, I, I think it's probably not true that we would not, we would I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't exactly hear your question, but I think we would more staff would be required oh. with a, um, and it, well, and it's, it's a bigger operation. Yes. Yeah. Right. It makes sense. So the additional cost for the town. Yeah. Yeah. And also with the retirement benefits and health insurance and so on. Well, and, I can't and, say that. Um, there are only two, 
that we have about hours, yes, yeah. depending on how it's. And it also depends on the hours. Uh, when you're putting on a large edition like that, you're probably going to be looking for more hours. Than well, that. I would certainly say that if you d uh, the town did um, go forth and um, spend the money and build a larger library, that you would want to offer as many hours as possible so that mm -hmm. the town could take advantage of their. So I just want to be clear, there will be additional costs. Right, and and with those additional costs come additional services. Yes, and also maybe additional donations as well. I mean. People get excited about, you know, the opportunities and stuff. But um, could could Sarah? Would you just have a second? I, I I know Nancy wanted to speak, but if you had a second, um, can you let us know how? Um, I know it's just started, but how are the uh, additional hours working out? Well, um, I was there on Saturday, and I thought that I would be, um, you know, twiddling my thumbs. Although I don't really twiddle my thumbs that much, but. Um, uh, we did keep count, um, and we were busy all day long. Um, somehow the word got out. People came in, and they said, oh, I realized I could come to the library this afternoon. We thought maybe because it was a little bit rainy that that might have um, brought people in, but, um, but it was busy all day. And um, downstairs we were keeping track, and, um, and uh, I realized that the um, person working down there had just stopped. Uh, making little hash marks because she just was too busy. So I think it's going to, I think people will really um, come to use the new hours, which are now um, 10 to 5 instead of 10 to 1 on Saturday. So come see us. Well, what if you just put a door count or something in there so you know how many people come through there? Um, well, I actually, we've looked at door counters. There was a, uh, at one time, there was a door counter that could be borrowed from the regional library. Um, but uh, I, I guess that they're not, um, anyway, if we got one we can borrow, we don't, we don't, um, we've looked into it. It's just not something that um, we want to spend money on. You can get a little clicker that just. Yeah, we've done that. Hash. Yeah, we've clicked. We do. Well, Nancy. I just wanted to say that um, over the past um, 10 years, there's been three or four different intervals that we've increased the library hours. And every time we've done that, they've been addressing you know, a different population growth, whether it was the young children, whether it's adults or school children. And every time we've done that, you know, the usage has grown exponentially, as does you know, the um, you know, amounts of books taken out and utilization of that the need for computers, the using of Wi-Fi. So we just are constantly seeing um, the needs of the library really change. Well, I, I think that's really exciting. And I, I um, know you don't want to hold up your designer tonight, but I just had one other question. Um, since you guys do a lot of this, um, you, the factor that we had here, um, additional need factor of 6.62, 6 um, what, what factors? Uh, were available. I mean, what are the other factors? The range of factors, I guess. I, I, the high, the highest town that I saw was, uh, I think, was New Bedford, and they were at fourteen percent. The lowest town was the town of Dover, and they were at point oh four. <laughs> so, so not this even actually, a full percent. The lower so, the number, the more affluent they are. Yeah, it's yeah. a it's a number based. It's actually a number based on real estate valuation, um, real estate valuation. Income, um, <laughs> believe it or not, school lunch program, mm -hmm. a whole bunch of little things yeah, that we'll, come in, and DOI spits this number out with like ten digits to it, and they convert it to a percentage. Yeah, no, we're we're, we're well aware of what they're doing, but that that's a kind of exciting to me because what that means is we're kind of in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't it, we're not going to be in the situation hopefully, and I, and I don't again don't um, this is not negative that we would have to make some kind of decision next July. I, I just, I feel stressed about that a little bit. But if we have some time to work on this, I, I feel like this is, you know, really doable. Yes, yes. And then we, you know, Absolutely. This won't, be, this won't be the last time we're here. <laughs> I know, I know, but that makes, but I, I saw that factor and I, that makes me feel better, so that means we're sort of in the middle, and that means you're, we're going to yeah, be in the middle a little, of the eight you're, years you're a little below the middle. Right. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like that's a good thing, maybe. I mean, it indicates we may have less it's not a, It's not a need based on whether you need a library. Correct. It's a need based on factors that have 
right. nothing to do but with your library. But usually that needs. will reflect maybe what's what, what that list could be. But that makes me feel better. So, you know, I'm not going to lose sleep tonight anyway. <laughs> but so what, what other things would you like to share with us tonight? I mean, there's, we have a good crowd here. Thank you all for coming. It's wonderful. So um, just any information in general that you haven't shared yet? or uh, The only thing I'd like to say is that it, throughout the entire process, we've tried to be open and transparent with every board we've met, mm -hmm. with the uh, two different administrators that we've dealt with. And we said as soon as we had numbers together that we'd be running to you guys, and that's exactly what we've done. Thank you. And, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to take it from here and start the next steps of starting to educate the residents of Deerfield what's going to come. Uh, as the grant application starts getting put together, you'll have an opportunity to be looking at that. Sarah, my, Phil, and I will be going to grant class uh, in uh, October, probably in Shrewsbury, I'm guessing. So um, we have to do an all-day seminar on, on, on the actual grant application. So we're excited about where we are for your town. We really and truly are as a team, and hopefully you'll, you'll like the outcome. Thank you well, for your work. I, I want to say that as well. Thank you very much, and because you have been um, as helpful as possible, mm. given the fact that um, you know it's a huge amount of money. <laughs> so I just want you to know I really appreciate it, and, and certainly uh, your design looked beautiful, and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're excited about that. Mm -hmm. Thank nice you. Work. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Thank you for your comments. We welcome other comments. Feel free, you know, if people are contacting you, to refer them to Sarah so that, um, you know, we can get that information. Well, you, I, you might need to respond to them. Well, all of you obviously are invested in the library, and I just mm -hmm. want to say thank you because, you know, having you take the responsibility to move along and have the community be informed of the, the need for the library. So, you know, the relevancy of the library now and as well as in 10 or 15 years to the town look, or 20 years, 20 year project. But the, the, making sure that the library, I mean, explaining that it's relevant to the community and where the community's going and meeting community needs is very important. So I, I appreciate you taking on the responsibility of trying to answer people's concerns about along that line and not seeing it as, oh, you're either for the library or against the library. You're, you, this is you're taking the opportunity to do the outreach um, to show, I mean, obviously you're supporting of the library, but you're trying to sh show to the, the community what you're doing now and the relevancy of it. And, and I encourage Sarah to come as often as possible to talk about the library because I think it's very exciting that people are, really know what's going on. Um, but I also really appreciate you taking the responsibility of saying, wow, this is a lot of money. When we're going to move forward and be creative and try to raise money, on, um, mm -hmm. and, and, which you have been successful in the past. And people do support the library individually. But the fact that you are taking the initiative to do um, fundraising and, and you clearly are moving ahead. You're not just saying, well, we'll wait while the you know, application process. You are having plans. I just want you to know I really appreciate that as mm -hmm. well. So thank you all for coming tonight, but also for all your work and trying to um, help us make sure that it's successful in the community. Thank you. Have a and good if night. you have any questions, you can call us. Okay. Any kind of issues that you want to talk about. And Sarah, you know you can come anytime. And I think coming on a regular basis is really helpful. Glass, uh, I work for Palo Windows. I know. So I know. One of the few people who know now that the pipeline is over, maybe I can read some <laughs> books. Nice. No, no, it's fine. It, it's good. I'm glad that there is some of that and there's an insulation behind it. It makes, makes sense now. Thank so. you. Thank, Thank you, you for yeah, clarifying that. We were yeah. really a little nervous about that. <laughs> Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, um, we have Moving the contract um, for the highway sign agreement. Now, Doug, we, we voted that last time, right? Or is this? Uh, yes, we did. Yes, we did. We did. And is this just a copy of the contract to sign, or? Uh, I do have a copy of the contract to sign. 
Okay. I'm pretty sure we voted. There's no change, is there? I think it was okay, just more so I'll, explanation. We'll just, we'll just, okay. Sure. I, yep. I, I can do that. Um, um, Historic Commission, uh, we have to approve the bid for the small corporation for the, um, from the small corporation for the display cabinet. That small corporation is the name of the company, right, Doug? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, you do have uh, a memo from uh, John Novay in your packet, I believe. Um, yep. Okay. And the small corp is what was recommended uh, oh, by the Historical Commission. Oh, yeah, Since okay. this is an invitation for bid and a substantial amount of money, uh, the Historical Commission asked that you um, officially vote to award it. Um, can I, can I ask a question? Sure. Who was the uh, outfit who did the uh, last display? Do I you know? am not certain. Um, I, I know that they were was... asked to uh, bid on the project and they actually declined the bid. Is that they the said... one that maybe pulled out? It said there was one that in the memo it said they pulled out, but I don't know if that was the one that did that one. I believe so. Yeah, Hillside Woodworking. I think that's who it is. Uh, that makes sense. They did a nice job on um, that. And essentially, Thayer Street Associates stated that. Uh, um, um, they even said going in that what they do is they, they would build the base but would um, bid out the construction of the clear cabinet to small corp anyways. And so small that's corp, why they've got an... Uh, yeah, so basically the, small the, corp is doing... The base. Or, or it's the other way around, one or the other way around. Um, small yeah. corp goes to Thayer for the base or what have you. Right. But in either way, uh, small corp is coming in under. Um, so. Doug, um, what was this... How, how much did we... Um, um, put aside for the CPA funds. I believe it's fifty five hundred dollars. Oh, okay. So this um, is truly under fifty five hundred or fifty six hundred. But that I think is also going to help pay for some of the transportation costs of the figure itself. Is that okay. the statue? The, yes. The thing for the statue. Yeah, yes. Okay. The expectation is that that'll be moved from uh, 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 PVMA, their main building, which looks an awful lot like this room actually, yes. mm -hmm. uh, like to like this cool. building, um, okay. and here it'll be placed on the case. And it can fit in, obviously. Uh, it'll easily fit into the um, door. the building because overall the, the crate is about three and a half feet square. Yeah. Uh, so it'll fit through any set of double doors. Uh, it'll probably come in through the front door, how down the ramp. How tall here. is it? Uh, it's life size. So the figure oh, itself stands I see. about so it's five it's Like a person. Foot. Okay. Are you talking about the statue that was removed? Correct. Yes. yes. Correct. It's going to be, the, it's gonna be in, in here. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Forever? Yep. Yes. Well, yeah. I'm just curious why. Well, they didn't want it outside, or um, correct. If replacing it back outside would essentially doom it to failure. Um, it would not be able to be. It's not going to be able to be uh, renovated to the point where it can be weather weather sturdy again. Um, there's the possibility in the future of creating a digital model of this and then having someone sculpt or mold uh, a replica out of some material. But at this time, um, the uh, interested partners. Uh, the folks who've been look, following this project for the past two or three years essentially said that uh, they don't recommend that. Oh, happen. Jane. I was listening on the TV. Oh, and Jane is back. Jane oh, is I'd like to correct something. Oh, yes. Uh oh, please Jane. do. Uh, Jane of the, Jane Trezere of the Historic Commission. Please come up, Thank Jane. You. And, oh, Have a and, seat and, at a mic. And, and, oh. Be on the mic. Oh, That's absolutely right. fine. Oh my gosh, we Look came running this. over because it really is important there. that you know that this was a gift. From Deerfield Academy. Oh, wonderful! This, yes, that. Yes. Right. This was not bid. We oh, didn't pay for this. No. Wow! It right. was an outright gift. That was gorgeous. From Deerfield Academy, yes. and we like to keep track of the gifts that we yes. do get from sure. the nonprofits. I'm, do I'm do sorry. you know who made who made it? Who actually built their, it? Their they staff. have they have their staff. Oh, their staff produced it. Yes, yes. I see. Yes, I see. it's gorgeous. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, it wasn't Hillside Woodwork. No, no. no. So Hillside Work Woodworking is a is an organization that's. I don't know what the street is, but where the where the UPS. where UPS is, okay. and they have a staff of people who are developmentally disabled or something mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and they do wonderful bookcases. And we ask them to do the bookcases that are inside that room. Oh, okay. I see. That's I see. a simpler yeah. work. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is this is gorgeous. Okay. I know this is crazy. And the third oh, party you. that dropped out is somebody called Callahan. Oh, okay. Got it. Yep. Thank and Thayer Street, Thayer Street Associates was the, other. was the second one. Yeah. But the recommendation still stands to go with small court. They were the lowest bidder. Yep. Jane, thank you for clarifying. Thank you, Jane. 
And, and also, thank you for uh, reiterating the, uh, the gift. I'm sorry, yeah. I wasn't paying attention to yeah. what you were saying. I, I just wasn't sure. Now, I rush home it. because the selectman's meeting's on the TV. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. I'm sorry, Jane. I could have corrected Fair it. Enough. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to read this, the contract. So I apologize. That's what you hear. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, but thank you very much. <laughs> Trevor, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. I just wasn't sure I, who I, actually I, made the thing. It yes. was one of these guys, or if it was. It's no, beautiful. Um, it's uh, just beautiful. Deerfield Academy sent their their staff down. They have wow. a carpentry crew. And, and they they produced they did it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. Really it nice. is. It is. It's really it's nice. High quality. Yeah, I love cherry. And it really, I mean, it was really nice because For we had all the come. all that stuff. All the stuff. We still have a lot of stuff that so could go in. That we could just build another one. <laughs> yeah, we could build another. One. We'll have to ask for another. Yes. Yeah. Ten, ten years from now, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It was quite a gift. Yeah. Um, okay. okay. So, so I would entertain. I, a, I make a motion to approve. Or award the bid to Small, Small Corp, Corp for, for the display case for thirty-eight fifty. Yeah, thank you. I'll second it. Okay, is there any further discussion? Nope. The Hearing. only thing I have is what is it for? Just to house historical it's to artifacts. house that it's to house that yeah, statue oh, oh, of the man oh, of the, uh, that was on top of the, the of actual, the, uh, the monument guy. the he's, monument statue. He's inside now. They were trying to build a, a, trying to a, a replica. Of Wouldn't it have made more sense to, if you're going to build something, build it and put it outside in front of that town hall? Well, I don't, I don't know. You mean it's at, a, at a, like man, ASIC or it's something? It's just a man, uh, man size. But, well, but, I just think it's kind of tight in here anyways, but I just thought okay. throw it out there. Okay. The, these is the, are not is the plan to safe. house it so, next to that somewhere okay, over so, there? Yeah. Okay. What we oh, have thought we yeah. would do eventually is, you know, as we go along, we fill up these gaps. So you'd have a hallway here mm -hmm. and, get, and you're sort of eliminating the stairs. You're, you're building, you're building these cabinets into along, the stairs, along the stairs. So you are eliminating the stairs. Okay. It's, it's really a safety issue. Because hmm. uh, when you see kids running around, it, I mean, a lot of kids come in here for like signing up of, Okay. Um, you know, sports stuff. You know, the recreation kind of thing. I think what you People bring their kids it might in. Might be nice to show outside too at some point. Uh, the idea was to build build these out a little mm -hmm. to keep people more safe. And you know, but we have access issues, obviously. So, I, and you get closed in, and so then it. But the acoustics and the acoustics are not great, so you're messing with the acoustics. So, do we have an all eye on that? Hi. Oh, Hi. all those favor. I. Yes. Hi. I'm trying to move on. It's okay. Yep. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, don't I, hold her up. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm trying to be really You're good. I'm, great. I'm being so really great. sensitive to you guys. Now, come on. Dick told me just move her along. Move I her know. Along. I know. I know. I know. I know. But I'm being trying to be this, uh, sensitive. Okay. Next so, item on the agenda is um, agricultural commission. commission. Um, uh, I would make a motion or. Yeah, I'll just make a motion. Make make a motion to appoint Jay Savage to the Ag Committee. Second. Um, second. Uh, any more discussion? Nope. The only discussion I have was that I noticed from the email that uh, the chair of that Ag Commission does not wish to be chair anymore. Do they get they, together? They have to organize. They, organize they, they, they Do they, they meet? Yes. They do. Yeah. They do. Yes. Okay, so they'll meet and pick their own chair like right. they normally Yes, any absolutely. Does. Okay, great. All, right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and thank you, Jay, for volunteering for that. Mm. Um, I don't know how we missed his name initially, um, so but that's all right. We've corrected it. Um, speaking of any appointments, yes, um, Doug, are, were there any feedback from any of the committees that we missed or messed up or missed somebody? Um, no, for the most part, we're doing pretty good. Um, we did realize after the fact that we may have some corrections to the um, to the finance committee terms uh, because what we thought was true wasn't necessarily accurate. Um, one of the pieces of evidence that we've gone back through over the past couple of weeks is um, one of the pieces that we didn't go through. We went through town meeting reports and our own records and signed appointment sheets and so on and so forth. We never looked at actually the book that uh, the town clerk keeps. When somebody comes in, gets sworn in, 
they fill out a, a place where it's right. their name, what their appointment is, and how, when, when their term expires. By going back through that book, we discovered that almost all of our finance committee terms were off by one year. Really? Um, so we're working to solidify that by going back through our moderator's appointments uh, to back at least to 2011. And from there, we'll work forward and make sure that our appointments are correct. If there are any corrections, we'll bring them to, well, actually, it's moderator appointments anyway. Yeah, so, right. so it's not. Uh, it's He'll not, adjust. Yeah, it's not, it doesn't apply. So uh, other than that, all the other appointments seem to be working out true, and uh, we're moving forward. Okay. Yeah. With um, that being said, did the moderator make his appointments to the finance committee? Yet, not formally. And okay. Dan Grace, if you're out there, please send me an email. Mm -hmm. um, we've had conversations, and we're pretty sure uh, he's pretty confident as to who he's going to be talking to, but he's doing due diligence and reaching out to each person personally. Once he does that, then I'm sure he'll get a, a completed list to us. Okay. okay. That's fine. Thanks. Hopefully um, tomorrow. So, Doug, when you have that corrected appointments list, can it be somebody maintain it? Yes. So that and when somebody resigns, on. yes, and they get accessible off, online, right? And we, then we, somebody yep. is appointed. Yep. They get added on. Yep. <clears throat> the um, system that we're using is now actually online. Right. Um, it's accessible by multiple people. Okay. Multiple people can access it, can change things, and I mean control. You know, right. it's controlled right. access. But it's also going to be publicly viewable through our uh, website. Right. Um, so anybody in the world can go and look and see who's on the Agricultural Commission, what members are there, when, when their terms can. expire. And as we work through, we're going to back uh, uh, into previous terms. So we'll be able to know that back in 2001, Tom Clark was on the Finance Committee you know, for a decision. So we could call Tom Clark and say, hey, Tom, in 2001, you were on the Finance Committee, and they made a decision related to this. What was that all about? So he'd say wrong remember. number. What's that? <laughs> he'd say wrong number, buddy. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> that could be. That could be. Click. Mm -hmm. But in doing that, we're going to be able to uh, to help to have a greater depth to our institutional knowledge. Um, that was a piece of software. It's a subscription. It's two hundred and seventy-five dollars a year, which is nothing. It is nothing in the grand scheme of things, and it's made the difference between night and day because it's allowed us to truly organize all of our appointments. Um, to every it it does day. more than just organize the appointments, mm. right? It does well. It organizes the appointments. It allows us to generate reports as to what appointments are up, when terms yeah. expire. It allows us to. Uh, it prevents us from making errors in terms of uh, how long a person is appointed for, which previous to which it was a matter of memory. You know, how long is the term of someone on the Agricultural Commission? Well, I don't know. Where do we find that information? It's in the bylaws, isn't it? No, I think we have to research town bylaw or, or uh, uh, the town meeting record from 2001 when the committee was formed and so on and so forth. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of um, research that. In this case, we're going to have it all in one place. Um, we'll also be able to have uh, contact information. So um, we'll be able to generate the appointment letters. We'll be able to generate letters two months before the end of the year saying, hey, your term's about to expire. Are you interested in serving again? Please call us. Um, so it's going to help us to automate the process and make it much easier to manage. All right. Thank you. Yeah. That's wonderful. Great. OK, next item on the agenda is um, two um, MOUs uh, to approve. This is, um, it's, this, this is a recommendation by Kevin? Correct. OK. Um, Kevin is concerned with the costs for um, our hauling, a little concerned with the costs of our hauling. And one thing he is looking to do is to look into the costs of our scrap metal containers. Um, he's looking to see if there's better options that exist for the town. Uh, this MOU does not require us to use specific services. If we choose to go outside of this uh, memorandum to acquire services, we can do so. Um, I just found Oh, there you go. I apologize. Yep. No, that's um, fine. I picked up my book, and obviously yep. this was, it wasn't in the book, so I apologize. I just found them. Okay. Okay. The, um, I asked uh, Kevin about the um, uh, wooden pellet bag recycling sheds and, and the management cost for that. He said absolutely positively a great deal for the town. It saves a great deal of uh, trash going into the bulky waste or the, or the compactor and saves the town money. So um, there they are. Okay. Um, so we got two copies of each for signatures. So, 
So do we have to take a, uh, make a motion. Make a, okay, so I make a motion to accept um, the two MOUs uh, for the FERCOG for uh, hauling services for transfer station and pellet bag recycling collection. Um, actually, it's from the Franklin County Solid Waste Management. Oh, District. I'm sorry, I said FERCOG there. But no, no, it says FERCOG here, but. Yep, um, so from Franklin yeah. County Solid Waste Management District. Yeah. No, nope, but I will. Oh, I'll second it. All right. Thank you, Kip. I was um, just trying to read more of it. Yeah. I, 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 um, so the we nor we normally go with them. Is this um, what but Kevin, we pay now? I mean, or does I know Dave Wickles or there's other companies that do this stuff, correct? Uh, uh, yeah, recycling, uh, trash, bulky waste, scrap there metal. Are, um, Kevin, Kevin, because has, a lot of times uh, with scrap, scrap metal you can get paid. Well, that's what I was going to say. Scrap metal is something that doesn't really need to be protected. We could make um, a three-sided concrete wall and have all the scrap metal put in there. When the pile gets obscene, they can go there with a loader and just put it in the dump truck, go to, it up to Greenfield and get paid for it, not right. pay any rental of any container. So one of the even easier uh, solutions would be to actually inquire with local companies uh, that do hauling anyways. Uh, I know that in Williamsburg, at their transfer station, that there's a local... Uh, container hauling company that simply places a dumpster and they take care of picking it up, uh, dropping off a new one, picking up the old one and they benefit by the getting the scrap value for the steel well, and it's done at no cost to the town whatsoever. Yeah, so but I'm no talking about whatsoever. making money. Yeah. Why so give it away? Why are we? You know, that's what I'm saying. If you just put it there and, y y you know, I, I mean, like you wouldn't you believe on talking, this little farm like that I live talking on. talking about adding labor and time and management. We get, the, we get a check. We get a check. From? It's a, it's a small dividend check, yes. Yeah, we do get, for the we scraps do get money. And we get but a small dividend money check for, scrap. for the recycling. Well, if, well. You, if you get a, one of the, the size dump trucks that we have, mm -hmm. you know, obviously it, it depends on how much is in there. But if you, on an average now in scrap metal is cheap, you would probably get $200 for a dump truck load. Mm. Well, I went with should. my pickup the other day, and I took an old dryer and a bunch of other stuff, and I, I got a check for $36. Now, it's not a lot of money, but I'm just saying people are bringing stuff to get rid of it, and they're just throwing it there. You know, the town could benefit from that. Um, well, um, so this, once again, these MOUs do not require us. the town to use these services, right. so if we but they do to, enable us to use right. the hauling services, and we're currently set up to use these. So if we wish to continue doing so, we need to sign these contracts. So if we do this, like the scrap metal, we have to, we pay 160 bucks plus $30 a month for the roll-off. Plus and then the $500, plus the 500 fee. Plus four, $4 a ton. $4 per ton to the COG. We pay them? For, Correct. Yeah. I mean, the bulky waste, I assume that makes sense in the trash and the recycling, I, but I don't know. The, the scrap metal, to me, is a no-brainer. Yeah. And um, have we entertained a bid from Wickles or any of the other... You know, do we, we have not we, issued an invitation. You'd have to do a. You'd have to do. We'd a, have to do a full procurement um, on this. We had. Okay, and any other people around that would. Um, but have we found this to be the best value over the years? Yes, but um, I think you've raised a good question on the scrap metal because mm. um, we could do. Can we separate the, the scrap metal from? Or we don't have to partake in that part of it. I have not. Ask the cog or the uh, district that question. Um, well, sure why don't can. you know what? Do you want this, to hold on this? This then? is um, this. We are already um, beyond July first, right. so um, I I would like to take this under advisement a little bit longer. We can. Do so you out. want to hold on this? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I will. Fair enough. Would you, I, I think, do you want to approve the pellet is, bag one? I mean, because that seems to be. Well, or how much is that? How about that one is like three hundred fifty bucks? Three hundred fifty bucks a year. Okay, let's um, let's let's vote the pe pellet bag one because that actually I feel like is a, is a good service. And then um, um, we'll just let's hold on the other. Do a little contract. research. Yeah. Okay. And have Kevin do a little research. Yeah. Kevin, don't hate us, but um, I think you know this is part of 
reviewing, um, you know, the whole transfer station on a regular basis because mm -hmm. we still subsidize it a bit. Right. I mean, if it, we could make it, a little bit of money back. It's not to the tune of $150,000 like it used to be. But, Whoa. Um, we've really done a lot of work on okay. that. Okay. But... Um, they do a good job up there. I know that. Yes, Every Saturday I have, go, they've done. They're yeah. great workers. Uh, they are. We have. Well, we are the very scrap fortunate. metal alone. I mean, at, at a bare minimum, we're we're spending over a thousand dollars for that. A year. I, spending a thousand. I think we could make maybe a couple make, couple um, thousand that way. Yeah, I, I don't I don't remember what our um, checks are. Yeah, but they're small. But well, we could do a little research not, in the next week or so. They're not substantial. So. so. Will we pay it monthly. The, we are or, charged. We are the and. Um, Scrap metal is $167 per haul. Right. Kevin says he hauls it at least maybe once every third or fourth week, maybe more yeah. often. Okay, so, so if you, like if you do month. that, so that's 1600 So we're really paying $2,000 just for scrap metal, well, where we could be generating it. You know, right. um, we're paying probably more like three or $4,000 a year yeah. for scrap metal. Yeah. We could make some do money. we charge? What does anybody have any idea what we charge people when they bring scrap metal to the? Dump? I think scrap metal you can throw in for free. You can throw. But the bulky free. items, you know, fifteen right. bucks or ten bucks or whatever. Bulky items is what. It, but I mean, if you bring a, a washing machine, there you can throw it in there for nothing. Yeah. I think so. I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think I could be wrong about that. I, I mean, the sure. metal, that's, I think you can throw in, but I think that's a good idea. Because I assume we made um, some money on it. Would you like me to direct Kevin to seek out? Alternatives? Would you like him to see if he can split off portions of the service? Um, see what would you like thoughts are me to find yeah. out what the opt-out provisions are on the contract? Mm -hmm. um, just, just have Kevin um, give us a little bit more information along those lines. If he comes yeah. back and says, "Look, yeah. it isn't worth it," but usually it is. I, I would say that scrap metal, we could make a little bit more money, maybe. But that might not, you might not have, you have the ability to parcel that out. Right, right. Because they might want to make the money. You know, on how that. much um, subsidization is going into the other. Because of the scrap metal. Yeah. Right, right. Because bulky, the bulky item dumpster costs us money. I know that. So I'll make a, a, a motion to approve the, the, um, the pellet bag regarding pellet bag recycling shed uh, from the Franklin County Solid Waste Management District at this time, and we'll hold on the other. All right, I'm second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, you know, um, we uh, we have a yeah, yeah, we have a, a complete you know For the two new three members, two? so um, maybe we could. Just talk about the have Kevin come and talk about the transfer station. Sure. And and I where we are uh, budget wise this year on it. Um, is, I know we we subsidize it much less than we used to, but there's still a bit of subsidy going on. So we could we could talk about it a little bit. Maybe get some ideas, creative ideas going, um, and um, sort that out so that um, you know we can make some decisions mm. coming up. I know they do a great job up there on the weekends for sure. So, yes. Yep. It's now that I look at these prices, they're. You know, in the bottom line. I mean, there's a, there's a place um, in East Hampton, right on Route 10. Yep. Where I I've bring you know truckloads of stuff, and yep. You know, you could. We would save a lot of money by doing that ourselves too. Jeez. Are you talking about hauling? Yeah. Like regular trash or waste? Yeah. Remember, these are 40-yard compactors. Yeah, but we could... Uh... As long as we don't add staff. That, that's right. what we would be right. discussing. Kevin. You would be, high, you would be uh, moving a, a container every week you do, or, or several times a week um, without the compactor. No, we have the compactor, right? We have the compactor. We still swap out a container a week. Okay. Both of recycling as well as the cardboard. Trash, at least. And we have two more. cardboards right now, right? That that was new. There's yes. Um, the expectation is that they they have one available in case the other one is full. Yeah, so and they're, they're filling both sure. at the same time when we're there. I mean, they. So there you are. They're using that. Quite, they're using it. Yeah, definitely. Um, Doug, I don't see um, um anything. Related to um, the personnel, this uh, board's. Uh, it is probably a loose handout. Oh, okay. Uh, look for it on your side. Yes. Um, and it's just a brief memo. Okay. Um, 
I, I don't see it here as an action item. That was why I just. Oh, know. I'm sorry. No, I was going to bring it up under your business. Oh, okay. So, no, that's fine. Um, we have an appointment the oversight board. Oh, South County Oversight Board. Right. Um, for the senior center. Uh, I'm right. sorry. And the would... expectation is that it does have to be a member of the select board. Yes, I and it has to be a board vote. So. Love to take and, that position and, if if I could. I mean, if I anybody. Would. And we would love to have you do it. Sure. Okay. Would that Great. be okay? Yeah, fine. I'm, I make a motion that we um, um, thankfully um, ask Trevor. I'll second the motion. <laughs> Great. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Third, we have to abstain. Thank you very much for doing that. Oh, I'm really that. excited I'm, to get involved. Again, I, I just oh. want to, I don't think people um, are just, a so I, I need to say again how appreciative I am because I don't think people realize how much you both of you have really jumped in and really doing work. I, I that's why I joked about learn. that 20-hour a week business. This is not a 20-hour a week, but whatever. Well. Anyway, thank you very much for both of you for really um, sharing the workload. I'm excited to help seniors any way I can. Um, well, we have. Seriously. I'm almost there, so I'm going to be calling you. <laughs> Give say, me a ring. Actually, we are. I'll leave a chair seniors, open so for you at the okay. card table. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kip, uh, STEM yes. building update. Okay, I, I was going to do this with a lot of enthusiasm, but I have to honestly admit, steam was blown out of me earlier tonight. <laughs> um, I have an appointment with Mary Ellen, I think her name is Mary Ellen, over in Waitley Town Hall Mary Ellen for Christ. Thursday at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I had set up an appointment on Tuesday, I mean on Monday, but she canceled. She said she had something else to do. Okay. So. Um, you know, I'm okay. going to meet with her and see what they have for a proposal. In the meantime, I've been working on a little thing myself, and I just show you kind of what I came up with. Oh my. Uh, it's just a garage. This is after talking with um, Zach. Yep. I, I, well, I took Zach's information and with what the, the board of oversight had put and all the things together, their square footage and stuff like that. Um, you can slide that over to Trevor. Yeah, and, I'd love to see. And you can kind of look at this. I brought this over to Zach the other day yeah, I could share with you. for him to look at it. He had a, a, just a little concern because he wanted another door of access in here in case people came back from a call and they needed to take a shower not to go through here. Okay. He thought it was 80%. Sure. Um, I think that it's a little more only because it's just a matter of moving uh, you know, interior walls around. Um, I've. I've also already developed a uh, materials list and got in, got in, that's right, um, have put out requests for uh, costs for everything from the concrete to the roof. Um, so that's going along pretty good. Um, so, but well, with that said, I think we should hire a project manager and get some engineer over here to, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so you have, you have a three day. Yeah. Three bay. We it's sixty by hundred. Community 100. room. Community room. The three offices. You've got a two bath, two four sleeping quarter. Or they or could office be. Or? They could be sleeping quarters, office storage. I didn't. I didn't list them as dorm rooms, but mm -hmm. that's what they could be used for. And this, you know, I'm going to change the, where the sink is, and they can put. You can fit up to ten lockers in each side. You know, just it's a, it's just a starting point. Right. But it, it's. But, it's so pretty clear. A, we're going to get a cost on what yep. this would take uh, get, compared to uh, right. doing the remodel at Waitley. Well, in addition to, I'm still going to go and meet with yeah, her and absolutely. see what they have. Right. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to go there and they're not going to have anything. It's going to be, well, what are your ideas? What are my ideas? And, and my response is that you got the information from the Board of Oversight. What's your proposal? You know? I and because I, I took their information and that's where I came up with this and I'm hoping they've done the same. So, do you know what I'm, you know what I'm saying, Carol? Mm -hmm. I, I don't. Not that I'm not unwilling, but I don't want to go there and start from the ground up. They've they've had all the requirements or requests, I should say, and they've had a lot of time to work with it. Uh, they also had the advantage of a, a meeting several weeks ago, and it was pointed out to them, and I'm not even. You know, I don't want to say I wasn't privy to the information, but I don't know what all the final discussion was. So 
they should have had an opportunity to, to address that. And, and so I'll, I'll go and talk with them about it. Um, Matt, do you, do you, would you like to have some discussion? I'd lo yeah. love for you to. Yeah, no, yeah we please. Have you come up. Jeff, do you want Jeff, to Jeff, can up? you please take a look as well? Yeah. I mean, do you have, why don't you, do you have that? Well, oh, it's just a. I know, it's just a, it's just the outside, but. So this is it. That's it. I want that. Okay. So it's a separate building. A separate building. Okay. Yeah, totally separate building. And the idea is, do we know where this building would well, I, I'm, it, it could Not go yet, anywhere, anywhere, but you know, if it was located on our land over near the fire station, you know, the, the facade this would match the fire station, even though it would, would be separate. It would, it would match. It would look right. like it was right. in the same kind of would, fire. Right. right. Would probably do a metal roof. Could do the metal roof like it would match. <laughs> I'm from. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mike, like we discussed earlier, the better you can build it, so there's less maintenance down the road. Absolutely, and it exactly. matches. It no, matches okay. the yeah. building. And actually, if you put this side on the south side, it mm -hmm. is, that would be facing, facing that building. Yeah, facing so south. The sun on those driveways. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Right. We Keep talked clear. about that for the highway garage when we were talking about putting yeah. the highway garage over there. The I, facing south with substantially difference on maintenance of the in storms. And you wouldn't and see a winter. need. I know there was a talk at one point about having a driveway around and three doors on this side is that you overkill know, I, I don't know if that is I, or not. I, I don't know i think that they can back up the the, the ambulances and uh put them you know, in if you, as long as you've I got mean, plenty of room yeah the doors are 12 feet wide and 12 feet tall so even if they're not real careful that they could still they get in there mix. okay and and i i look at this a little differently it's like you know Every, it doesn't matter what we're talking about. You the can people always do involved something different. have a, a dream building in a, sure. in, a, in their wish list, if you will. But I, it's important that they have their own facility. I agree. But you also have to keep the dollars in check. Yeah. And by having a solid wall on the north, it can be very well insulated. Right. You know, the, the cost of heating this building, you know, although you don't really know how many times the doors are going down, this building could be heated for about $1,500 a year if the doors were never open. Right. Know, that's we what a good energy open. efficient building is. None of this, I don't know how these people come up with all these uh, stretch code things because I, I've, I've called three different, you know, hers Raiders, you know, not They're only on this, different. but about the school. And they, they come up, there's no way it would pass. And I go, well, how do they do this? You know, it's, that's what engineers and architects are allowed to do. They have their magic formulas. You know? Yes. And, uh, but anyways. What are your thoughts, Matt? Yeah, I, I, you know, I'll be honest, I've been deferring a lot of the decisions on this to Zach because mm -hmm. he's the one who's got to manage it. He's the one who's got the better knowledge in it. Yeah. So as long as you've been working with him. Yeah, I, I ran, input, I mean. I met him the other, I met with him the other day for about 40 minutes and you know, just to go through and show him, and you know, I said, nothing here is in stone. No, it's just, it can be. It can be changed real easy. But I, I gave it to him and I said, what is this about this that you don't like? And his, the only thing that he really came up with is we he didn't that like access. there was only one door to come here. If the people come back and they're messy, he'd rather have see a door here through this closet and come, come there. in there. But yeah. you know, right. rearrange small things for the hallway you know, it's there. Right. Yeah. 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 So they come out of the bedroom right out. Mm -hmm. That makes sense too because yeah, it know, does. It I does. Mean, there are yeah. some yeah. 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 We yeah. talked about. At the fire station, they talked about they should have flipped the bathrooms in their small mini room so that when they, they could come from the bay through the bathrooms and locker room mm -hmm. to dump all the dirty stuff before they head into the building. Yeah. Well, this way, if they came down this hallway, it would be basically just eight feet down the hallway, then yeah. into it. You know, this wall here would have to be a block wall for fire separation because of the garage and stuff. Right. But that's a very um, appropriate way of doing it, a very cost efficient way of doing it. You know, cement blocks make uh, an ideal firewall. Absolutely. But because it's on the interior of the building, you don't have to worry about losing, you know, any heat through the concrete right. like that. Right. So, exactly. You know. yeah. That building looks very good. Yeah. yeah. That's a good design. I'm assuming you're going to have a, a poured concrete floor. Yeah. I'm assuming you're going to go with radiant heat. No. No. Why not? No. Uh, we're going to go with. Uh, well, let's go. What I'm anticipating is hot air heat in this side of the building, and a combination of hot water heat here and you know ducted air conditioning but it's all inside um, what's called a conditioned area 
the entire building would have a 14 foot ceiling, but in this portion it would only be nine feet tall. It would be a suspended ceiling. Sure. Then you could have the mechanics right above the bathrooms or something like that to run you know, the air ducts and stuff. And the, the, the key with that is because it's in the conditioned area, you don't have to spend a lot of money insulating all of this stuff. Right. Everything is right in, there. in the conditioned area. And that this whole unit gets sealed. You know, you can put an R50 insulation in this entire thing that goes over the eaves. You won't have any ice buildup. And, you know, it'd be very cheap to heat. You can use the same size furnace in this building as you would in a residential house. It only takes about 110,000 BTUs to heat that area. Standard match pitch roof? What's that? Standard match pitch roof? It's going to, I, I, I drew it as a, a seven pitch because I believe that's what the, is on the, the right, fire both, station. Both faces of the roof are the same height? Yes. yes. Yeah. As opposed to something yeah, no. like it, that? It would, it would be typical like a house. So that means that if you've got some snow, it's going to come down in front of your uh, doors? No. Off the roof? No. You, you it's put, going to come down off that steel roof? No, it won't. Right under your driveway? No, it won't. You're saying it won't? Yeah. You, you look at the fire station, same setup. Yeah. And the fire station, you know, the same thing. You, you, put these cleats, you can put the, the, the cleats and stuff like that. It will melt. You know, when it, would it come down? It would, but not like what you're thinking. You know, if you see a typical uh, metal roof, when the snow slides, the whole thing comes like that. What happens when the snow comes off those things is that it's toward the end of the melt cycle when there's little pieces and it falls between it. So it would fall as slush. It wouldn't be, you know, a 50-pound glob of snow yeah. and stuff like that. The other but, thing is when you do this, if it's set up in such a way that the town of Pyrotrox can get as close as possible. Mm, exactly, right across it. Yeah. Yep. And, and, you know, what I'm thinking is because of the way this is and the layout, of it, if in the future you wanted to add on another bay, it's as simple as just adding three walls and, you know, putting the roof on it. It's not tearing everything apart. And, you know, it, it, it's a very inexpensive idea. You could put an addition on this of another bay for around $20,000, you know, so. Expansion is pretty, but I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. so, I know, and, I, I know. and I'm working. I think I shared with you. I'm working on two, two ways of building this. Okay. okay. And so either way, either way, it's it would be very, very affordable. Great. Okay. And then in the meantime, we'll continue to work. Yeah, I'll, I'll continue to talk to Waitley. Um, you know, this is see I, what you know, we can get. Even I mean, though I'm working on this, it's just I, the reason I'm doing it. I don't want to label it as a backup. It's just. An, another another avenue so right. we can see where we go you know which is the most affordable way right to and, do this. and if this works the way i want it to do you know all three districts will, will benefit. benefit because the cost will be really well really good <laughs> extremely well well great and, and yeah operationally it will be cheap oh operation will be you know they will be there in the town could retain ownership of that and let the e south county use it and only charge the not really even charge them, just say, you know, you maintain the building or, you know, uh, for the heat and electricity mm -hmm. and then you can use it. You know, I think that's a, that's a good way. So all three communities would, would benefit because we They're wouldn't paying. be paying for housing, whether it be rent or mortgage or anything like that, you know. Yes. It could work that way. Actually, oh, there are a number of ways we could actually put solar on that roof um, if we want to. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah. but then again, I don't know how the, the power company is dealing with it. If you have solar on your own building, do they have to, you know, allow that meter to run backwards? Cause you, for your own you thing? have to still get the approval to do the net metering. Yeah. Uh, mostly that's about the inspection for the, uh, the wiring to make sure that it's wired properly and the cutoff switches are in place right. and operating properly. Right. You still have to do the, the witness tests on and so forth. Right. Um, but it's easier than a commercial entity trying to build a generation facility yeah. so very functional design mm. because if you yeah. option if you need to, to add roll, yeah add. yeah and it well, gets them all in one spot i will remind the board that unless this is entirely gifted to the town by a third party we must go through public procurement I, yep. I'm, we I'm must working. pay yep. prevailing wage correct i i i understand that and yes. and i'm working on two different scenarios to go for and that, uh, you know, I, I had a long, car this is kind of getting off the, the track a little bit, but I had a long conversation with the contractor that is doing the school roof. And if we had chosen to, you know, hire somebody to, to do what our day, our DA did, 
and then hire this contractor to do it, the price of roof would have been about $700,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, Let's so see. moving that's, on. That's all I think I need to have. Thank you, Kip. Oh, no, no big deal. And uh, I, I should have some more information, hopefully within a couple of weeks, you know, from Waitley and right. also on this. Love too. to see where they Perfect. come in. Okay. Um, that's wonderful. Um, is, um, would you, you, you're still going to be able to um, talk to Zach? when you get some more information. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, I, I told him that I'm, I would definitely keep him, in, you know, I, okay. I confided no, in no, him. No, 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 I meant so. when you talk, meet with Waitley. With Waitley. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Every, anything I, that, I, I anything know that, that they, on. the reason, I mean, the part of the reason we, uh, I mean, we haven't gone to any meetings yet, but part, part of the reason that the Oversight Board uh, rejected Waitley's proposal was because it didn't meet their needs. Right. Well, we want to make sure whatever they come up with. Would whatever be. they come up with us. And that's why yeah. I, yeah. I went to Zach and I asked him, I said, you know, what is this? You know, I'm what not married to anything here. And, right. And his input was, you know, I understand it. But, you know, overall, I, I was glad that he liked it. And, yeah. you know, like I said, it, it, it's not, I don't want this to be another garage mahal. No. I want it to be something that's functional, that. You know, they're, they're happy with it's a good place for them. Yeah, you know, it works and uh, you know, go from there. Kip, thank you. Not a yeah, problem. that looks really great. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we're hopefully moving. it could work out. It'd yeah, be great. Um, next item on the agenda is this mosquito monitoring update. Okay, um, the contract has started. Um, I drove around with um, VDCI personnel and we talked about the town and they talked about. Um, what they've identified and they set traps and we actually have had our first um, trapping response um, you know uh, collection and um, analyst you know testing yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, the good news is this has been dry yeah. so there are far less mosquitoes than normal um, we're building up data and, and um, profile for the town. The, the bad news is that we ha of, the f of the 51 different species of mosquitoes found in Massachusetts, we, have, we are trapping all of the ones that carry um, West Nile disease and Tripoli. And Tripoli. Well, Tripoli was but just they are clean at this point. Yes. And there has only been one <clears throat> about 20 miles east of here, right. one reported case of West Nile so far. So um, <clears throat> the season really doesn't get started till next month that we are doing it. But the good yeah. news is I went to Springfield. You know, I, I had told you that we're both, that this up and down the valley, we've been working together, the towns have been working together, and we've been complaining to DPH and all this mm -hmm. kind of stuff. So anyway, we, we had a meeting last Thursday down in Springfield with um, Dr. Catherine Brown. She's a state vet, um, and she's in charge of the mosquito programs. The Department of Agriculture sets the traps. The Department of Public Health tests them in Massachusetts. And our big complaint is that, number one, they are absolutely not responsive to us. We've been trying to do this for two or three years. Number two, the turnaround rate if you do work through the mass lab is like seven or eight days, which way too long, way too long. So we've been trying to get, um, the mass, the UMass lab certified that does our ticks and, and they, they're wonderful about sharing the data and the turnaround is within 48 hours. So if we have a mosquito that shows up that has triple E or West Nile, we can get the information, push the information out to the public and the public can respond, you know, with more, um, protective measures, you know, using D, making sure they don't have activities um, Ooh, so outside at area. dawn and dusk, because most of these mosquitoes, the Zika virus is a different mosquito, but the ones, these ones that transmit triple E and West Nile are, are active at dawn and dusk kind of um, activities, so people can be more, you know, um, alert. What? So, oh. so, oh, I'm no. sorry, go ahead. If you no. um, so anyway, um, we got a lot of good information from her, and um, and she was really listening to us, and she agreed to do a pilot for Greenfield and Deerfield because we're like a little cluster here, and we and they did 
um, and they apologized for last year not giving us any heads up that they were going to come out and test and then not giving us the information that they in fact trapped um, West Nile disease mosquitoes and um, they, they didn't really tell us what we They read never it. said? No, we read it in the newspaper oh, kind nice. of thing. So anyway, long story short is that we are going to get some free services through DPH Labs and as a pilot program. I have two more meetings tomorrow, a prep meeting and then a, a meeting with um, to, to discuss some of this stuff. And we're hoping that the program can be expanded because it's not enough service. It's nice. They're going to give us 100 free testing pools, mm -hmm. which we could blow through if we have a, a, a more, you know, we start See. getting hit. This, we blow through that testing pretty fast. So what we're trying to do is push for more and make it more realistic, you know, and talk about their turnaround rate because mm -hmm. it's great that they're going to give us free testing, but, if it you, takes know, a week. you know, we've got to get a turnaround rate same day kind of, mm -hmm. you know, you, you get the, the mosquito down there, they get it and then give us the, you know, the results the next day. And so you're, it's, a, we need the 48 hours. Right. Um, well, I, okay. And I know I'm the bump in the log, but I read through this service agreement for the Zika thing and in four and a half pages, the word Zika never appears. And I was it's, curious it's, why. It's not Zika. It's not. Oh, well, that's it, what it was sold to us for. No. No, no, no. I no, never no. said anything about Zika. Seriously. No. All right, then right. for West Nile virus and Triple E, we've known about that for 30 years. We've been... Massachusetts is the number one, actually. Is what I'm just saying, that we've been, we've been inoculating our animals for the past 20 years. We know about how we... I don't see what we stand to gain. We know it's here. We know it's dangerous. We've been taking precautionary measures for 20 years. What new information we, is going to come from we, this? We've been taking precautionary... Um, it's true. I mean, I've, I've been a horse owner well, you know. in my entire life. Um, and, but things have changed, Kip. Uh, one, one of the things is because of climate change, you're, uh, you, you have to have a booster now for your triple E shots. Your triple E shot is only good for six months. But because we have warmer season, it's not long enough. You used to, uh, you know, you used to, I used to get be a good goody two shoes and get my horse done in February or March. And you would think that that lasts the season. Well, if, if you do it now, you're, if, if you do it in February or March, when you have the peak season in September, when you need the coverage the most, you have your, your vaccine um, immunity is going down. So you actually need a booster now in the fall. Your but vaccine- I, I understand that, but how, do, how does this no, no, no. So. help? No, so, well, what this does is, you're talking about animals, okay? There isn't a vaccine for triple E or West Nile disease for people. Correct. Okay? And what is happening is that it's circulating. It never used to be circulating that much. And it is circulating more and more here. And this is just my personal opinion, having gone to meetings, but West Nile is people get freaked out about West Nile, but mm -hmm. truly Triple about 80%, um, you're, you're not gonna, you're not gonna he have it, you don't even know Unless if you're you a young child it. or an old. Okay, right. 20%, you're gonna get a little headache, sore throat, you're gonna think it's a summer cold. It's the 1% that, um, and it's mostly your elder elders, mm -hmm. over 75, and your very young, young kids that are susceptible, that 1%. So people freak out, you have to be vigilant, but I think proportionately, it's very, very scary to me, because a triple E is, is much more, it's, it's, it's happening earlier, it's happening everywhere, much more frequency, and it, it, if you, it has a 30 to 40, 30 to 50 percent mortality rate if you get bitten. If you're one of the, if you're a survivor, 80% of the survivors have serious neurological damage and your susceptible population is under 18 and over 60 and but I be it begs the question so so even I think, I think the, the answer Kip, I think the answer is probably 
you know, as Board of Health, we should be notifying our residents immediately if we see a strain coming through. Like we know it's out there and everyone kind of does, you know, puts it, stays out, you know, doesn't go out right at dusk to go play soccer with your kid and, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. But if we get a test and we get it back in 48 hours, it says in, in Old Deerfield there is a strain of triple E, so this week you've got to be you send a me message out so yes. what we would do would be an alert we would use the um code red and, and alert residents that there is um positive tested triple e mosquitoes this is where we're picking it up yeah we got to test back quick and then we as the board of health would if if there's um activities like outdoor sports we, if it's severe enough, it. then we would ask that they change their schedule or change their activity. But the main thing is people would be then more alert to do something. Yes? Yeah, just, just a question. If this was new to the budget for this year, it started at 11000 is this going to become an annual line item? I was very upfront that I was going to make this as cheap. I mean, we were, we've been working on this for a long, long time. And uh, two or three years, and I was very upfront, uh, Jeff, that I needed to find some kind of baseline, which we haven't yet found, but I think around 11,000 would be your baseline, and that it would be like a snow and ice budget. You ramp up and you ramp down. This is no mitigation. This isn't any um, dramatic testing. Now, if we're coming back with the pools are heavy duty, triple E circulating. You better believe I will be in to the finance committee for a transfer to um, ramp up the testing. And then we'd be talking about mitigation. Now, unfortunately, Deerfield has a lot of wet areas. So I don't know, lava siding is far cheaper than adult siding. So you would want to lava side as much as possible and, and I, I haven't even gotten to the point where I can educate myself on what lava side, what the what the kill rate is for a lava siding, or if we had an emergency. And that's part of what we're going to we're talking about with the state, and and talking about with VDCI. And then um, then the other thing you can do is you can do spraying, and it is not like DDT spraying. I just want to make that absolutely clear. What we're talking about is your sterilization of the you know, you, you kill off, you know, males or whatever. I don't, I think it's males. Although the females are the ones that bite. <laughs> is there... But anyway, the idea is that you, we would have some kind of mitigation cost if, if we have this dramatic public health thing. But we wouldn't, we wouldn't know unless we're doing a regular testing and modification. And, and, and the state came back Number one, they, they, they kept blowing us off when we went to the meetings for the reclamation boards to, to, to form this Pioneer Valley District. And um, then all of a sudden we started negotiating with VDCI, which is a really reputable national and international reputable company. And the CDC, as a matter of fact, has contracted with them to work in floor, you know, in the su southeast part of the country. So anyway... Um, then all of a sudden the state was willing to talk to us. They gave us a price that was three times the cost of VDCI plus poor service, really. Mm -hmm. um, the turnaround on the state lab was poor uh, seven days versus 48 hours. And they you know, were going to do a lot less. These people are really accessible. They're, edu they're willing to educate us and all that kind of stuff. So anyway. We're, we're working with the state, basically complaining and whining on a regular basis, and we are getting some response because we're, they don't want us to really go off on our own. But, you know, we, we pushed back and said the pricing is ridiculous. You're, you're charging us three times what, I mean, we're getting better service by doing this ourselves and banding together and getting this, you know, a discount as a group where we have this good pricing. So they need to compete, basically. But then that's when they started saying they'll do this pilot, and I don't know. Would uh, VC, is it VCD? V, v, 
uh, vector control, would vec uh, vector disease control in would, international. Would they, do they have any outreach? Would they come to a, oh, yes, come to a meeting and do a um, educate our public on why we're doing this? And, we're going to have a mosquito night. The I whole would thing. love to, at least. Yeah. And then people could judge, you know, whether this is continuing or not. A bit of at least we could. This, get this, an the whole, on. the whole sell on this was to have a data Just for to our have town, a baseline, right? To understand, have a profile, understand what's happening here in town, so we can make informed decisions. Now, the Zika whole Zika thing comes in is because the president has asked um, the, you know, Congress for. 1.9 billion or whatever to fight the Zika, and there was supposed to be some kind of, Leftover you know, 50 from. state kind of thing because originally they said that Zika wasn't going to come up this far, but apparently New, in New Hampshire has these mosquitoes already, um, and none of them are tested positive. No, no, Correct. no, no, no. no. But they have nowhere them. in the country. Yet. No, 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 no. But what what is they told us originally when they were first having this discussion was that, that it was mosquito. going to be 2020 before any mosquitoes came up to Massachusetts. That and they could down, carry it. Then they changed it to 2018, and then they have been doing some mosquito trapping, and they're finding the mosquitoes already beyond us. And the only reason we don't have any information is because nobody has done consistent testing out here at all. So, I mean, we've never been on the radar for the state at all out here. So we have no information. And so... Our, the idea was to monitor our situation and build a, pro, a profile and have data. And then if the situation happened, because the Zika is, is um, there are already 236 pregnant women in, in the United States that have Zika. And um, there's been four births and um, four uh, miscarriages. And as, as a result, of not doing anything, you you just keep building the number of people. And then with the Rio, right the next month. Well, and and so all it takes is a mosquito to bite an, an infected person to be bitten, and then goes and transfers it to another person, or sex. You have unprotected sex with an infected person, and it's it can be up to six months. So exponentially you don't it doesn't take a lot to at some point Zika's going to break out and it's moving forward so you have to realize at some point Congress is going to do something and just because people will be each baby like is estimated way. to be like 10 million dollars in cost so at some point there's going to be a public outcry that if you don't care about the anguish to the to the families you don't care about the anguish to you know, um, whatever, it, it, just dollars and cents, it doesn't make sense not to do something, and then it, something will happen. So there's, for us, we have to be prepared to have some, some setup to take Zika money if it's necessary, if, if we have some kind of outbreak. And so that's really what we're positioning ourselves to for, is to understand, number one, mosquitoes, become really educated on mosquitoes, understand what our mitigation possibilities are based on what we have, and then if anything happens with Zika, we can say we're, we're ready and we'll, and we'll do something. Um, if we're starting from ground zero, uh, it will be awful. So we're, we're, trying, to, we're trying to be a little bit proactive, but also I'm seeing this as a climate change thing. I mean, the ticks in the same my same yard in the you know I had four kids that grew up at my house and they played in the woods and they played in the yard and I, I don't I don't ever remember taking a tick off of my kids and they were outside as much as I could get them outside so that was pretty constant and they were wild in the woods you know playing war or whatever and. I have two grandkids now, two granddaughters. Same yard, they go across the lawn, and you have to do tick checks daily. Every couple hours, we're doing tick checks. You know, it's just it's it's you have to realize we're having change, we're having climate change, and it has impact. And bugs, having more disastrous bugs is part of it. And just just like we have to deal with more water, 
uh, you know, I'm harassing poor Kevin constantly. We're, we're having to deal with more water, so we're having constant culvert issues, and we're constantly trying to figure out ways that we can mitigate it and, and mitigate the, both the cost and, 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 and the damage that's done on a regular basis. We have not had rain for how many days? You know, I mean, it's really, really dry. We're in a mm. drought. That's okay. great. It kills the mosquitoes. Well, right. it is no. from the mosquito point of view. But at the end of the year, our averages always work out. So we're going to have these deluges, and that's what we have. Is we that's have what they call life, Carolyn. I you know. know. And it, it's like, well, I, I don't. I can't, it's we're okay trying to protect life. Well, but, I just but want you to realize, on the 4th of July in 1949, it was 100 degrees. You know, maybe the, the, the press didn't changing. sensationalize things like that. And if, you, if you, you go back in history, where we're sitting now, we were, what, 65 feet underwater. This was a lake. You know, the earth is changing. It's a living thing just like we are. It's going to get, get warm. Into... It's going to get cold. Yeah. Now, maybe wanna... we all drive cars, and I... that contributes to it. But... Right. I don't want to get into um, to talking about climate change. But, yeah. no, but, you know what? But I do, After if you working do on look the farm specs, bill, it's climate evolution. Evolution or whatever no, it might cannot, be. It's non-political. You non -political. look at the amount of CO2 that's put into the atmosphere. It's oh, just yeah. off the charts. So sure we will have some effect of that. Yeah. You know, how, how it'll play out, I don't know. And I agree there is a lot of just common change that goes about and different fluctuations of, of weather. But uh, there's certainly something happening. But as long as we could just get a, get a baseline of where we're at with this, um, you know, we'll re reassess and see where we're going to go. I, it, it, and we have to see if it's worth it. I mean, right. at, in December, when we are go putting the budget, next year's budget, uh, you know, I, I, I was After joking we that, the year? I bet Jerry, breakfast at Jerry's place, I'm going to get you convinced. <laughs> I, I'm convinced that this will be worth it based on my experience with VDCI so far and the information that I'm getting. And I'm, I, they, they, Emily, the mosquito lady, she's really nice. She, the mosquito lady's gonna come and we'll have a mosquito night and they're, they're more than willing to come and do, um, they have educational materials uh, as a company. They have generated, you know, you don't need individual Deerfield generated stuff, but they have a lots of generated information. Um, they're very knowledgeable and, and I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed so far. My time spent with them has really been worth it. I feel like I'm really learning a lot of stuff that will be a benefit to the town of Deerfield. So I don't feel it's a waste. I, I, I feel that we'll get our money's worth out of this. And, but that doesn't mean that I have given up on the state. I will get squeeze out of the state anything that I can get. And you know that I can guarantee you that right off I and then we'll just anybody that knows me knows right? that I'm always out there hustling so <laughs> I've been hustling that and we're gonna have this big meeting they've already been invited and we're gonna have a big huge with all the mucky mucks from DPH and they're coming out and we're gonna meet in Greenfield and we're gonna tell them you know how rotten they've been to us for not taking care of us and how we've had to go out and Don't do all this and they better to start working on this with us so Jeff, just to reassure you, I am not giving up on getting state services. It's just I don't feel like we should pay three times and get less service. And, and, and I'm, 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 I'm being a real witch about it. I'm sorry. And they, they are really well aware of it. And we're organizing up and down the valley. And because we're organized um, and we have gone out and got private contractors, um, they're, they're starting to pay attention. So Number eight. Number eight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You did. Administrator's ask report. <laughs> I asked the question. You better not. <laughs> you do have a copy of uh, minutes. On yes. Your desk, yes. If you if you've had a chance to review them. I I apologize. I, I had not yet. And if I, you haven't, we can wait till next week. I can take a or look. Next if you have a, a sec, I can go through. Did you guys look at them? They look no, a lot longer than they oh, are this, because um, the last yes. session includes yes. all of yeah. your appointments. Okay, that's what happened. It's a June 28th meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm, um, yep. I didn't see the word minutes. That's why I was throwing it. Ah, okay. You're right. Um, I just, just the update on that MCAP meeting that I had earlier. Um, we, we are going to continue to push for the moratorium. I, I think I said What's that. For the, the moratorium, for the lifting gas. of the Berkshire Gas Moratorium. Oh. We're still working on that. 
we're going to we're trying to stress conservation, get them to work more on conservation. Um, they haven't been very um, good about fixing leaks and doing conservation, and that we figure is quite a percentage. So anyway, I know you don't. Again, I don't. It's okay. It's okay. It's, it's okay. okay. I'm working on it. To the list of all the appointments. Okay. We can talk so much, Doug wouldn't have to type so much. <laughs> you guys, come on. Well, K Kippy, you ask a question. You know, I, I, I want to give you yeah, as complete you could an say answer. Yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it's very difficult for me I, I, to say yes or no. There's usually extenuating circumstances. Um, do you guys want to just I'll go make a ahead? motion to okay. uh, approve the minutes for June 28th? I'll second them. Is there any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Great. Um, Doug, your report. Uh, it will take just a few minutes. Okay. Uh, thank you for approving the minutes. That was the first thing on my report. Um, I was handed this this afternoon and I promised I would read it. Uh, this is an update from the Deerfield Rec Department. Uh, the concert's on the common. Uh, we'll begin this Friday, July 15, uh, with oh. the band Backtrack. Uh, concerts are held 6.30 to 8 p.m. on the town common and inside town hall if it rains. Um, Larry Berger Band will be on July 22nd and Wildcat O'Halloran on July 29th. The Frontier Track will be open for the Union 38 community on Monday and Wednesday morning from 7 to 10 a.m. and Wednesday nights from 6 to 8 p.m. beginning July 11th, if folks want to use the track. Uh, family fun nights will be held on July 12, 19, and 26. From 6 to 7 at Memorial Field, families will play Parents versus Kids Dodgeball. Cool. That needs to be an FCAT feature, I think. Yeah. Um, there is still space available in the morning summer program held from 9 to noon, the week of July 25th. Also, Afternoons of Mad Science, uh, the week of July 18th. And Let's Go, G-O-G-H, Let's Go Art, on the week of July 25th. Uh, Frontier Varsity field hockey coach Missy Mahar will offer a two-day clinic on July 26th and 27. For girls in grades 3 to 7, equipment is available with a deposit. And the department also has discount tickets to Six Flags New England, um, for a low price. More information and registration forms about all these programs can be found on the town's website or you can email Director Sue Antonellis. Due diligence done. You have um, in your side packet um, a uh, memo from uh, Nancy Schwartz who's the personnel board recording secretary. It talks about the fact that the personnel board decided last night to approve, um, a prelim to give preliminary approval to a request from Kevin Scarborough. Uh, the request basically is to allow the position of the mechanic, grade two, and foreman, uh, grade three, to be combined into one new grade three position with a new title of mechanic slash foreman slash equipment operator. And I believe the correction is maintenance slash foreman slash equipment operator. Mm -hmm. Correct. The expectation is that the, this person would not only do maintenance on vehicles, but also take on the maintenance of town buildings and other property. Um, would be available as a foreman as needed and would also be available as an equipment operator if necessary. Um, this is going to be a very good use of um, present skill, present talent, and uh, one of the concerns I had with uh, when Kevin first brought this forward was, okay, are we basing a job around a person who's in, in staff right now, or is there other people who could do this same job that you're designing? And in two minutes, both he and I had thought independently of at least two or three different people that we knew outside of the town, not employed by the town, who could do the job of working on heavy equipment, working on light equipment, doing maintenance on uh, town vehicles, but also being able to do light plumbing, light electrical, uh, patching of sheetrock walls, uh, repairs to gutters, uh, so on and so forth, and coordinate with contractors as needed. So um, the personnel board has approved that, um, the combination of the position. They have approved the placement of that at grade three. And uh, Kevin's going to be working over the next few weeks on a job description. I'll be assisting him with that to make sure 
the description meets the criteria that we've established so far. Um, and we'll bring that to you for approval. Um, how's he doing being understaffed? Uh, he's managing. Okay. Yeah. Um, getting this done is going to be key to doing that because instead of hiring a foreman, he'll now be able to go out and just hire another operator, um, another staff, and that'll bring him up to a full staff, which is okay. good. All right. Um, so no action needed on that, but there it is. Um, you do have, I think, information in your packet in regard to a request for comment from the ZBA. Mm -hmm. This is um, yeah. uh, for a variance that's being applied for um, for a new ice rink happening at Deerfield Academy. Um, town uh, bylaws limit buildings to 35 feet in height. Um, this one is going to be about 54 feet in height and they're looking for a variance. They want to know if the board has any comments. <sighs> Unfortunately, I don't have any. I only have the material that you were presented. Um, and I looked at the application. The application was just literally the language that was on the, 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 the planning board has not taken any action, but we had some discussion about changing that anyways. Uh, years ago, the, the issue was fire apparatus was in, in effect. But since we've gotten one of these... Uh, ladder power trucks, truck. yep. power trucks that that would no longer be an issue. So yep. I I can't really speak to uh, an actual foot height, but I do believe we were thinking of 50 feet. So it would uh, still be a little bit. I could. Still, it still would have to have a variance. Yeah. Change that. Yep. Um, I, I don't have any issue with it. It it doesn't sound like it's going to be residential, which is of course the hugest right. issue. It's, so it's not. It's going into the I think the yeah. same general location as the current. Yeah. And I, I also believe where it's located contributes to its elevation because I don't believe that the entire building is that tall. It's just going to be the southwest corner of it. Yep. I think as, you're right. As the grade drops right. off kind exactly. of thing. Right, exactly. Okay. It's kind of like the what's the main dining commons mm -hmm. building on, yeah. at DA, where if you're on the one side, it's only you know 25, 26 feet high. But if you're down in that lower parking lot, that sucker is like a, sky, size, a skyscraper. It's huge, yeah. but but it's because of the differences in the elevation. Right. So okay. So if you don't have comments, I will forward this with no comments back to the ZBA. If I may, yeah. I may I suggest notifying the fire chief of South Deerfield. No. Old Deerfield and Greenfield mm -hmm. of the building request just from the standpoint of looking at the design for the outside because when you take a platform truck that's as big and as heavy as what they are, mm -hmm. there's going to be requirements for the pavement. They can't go off road. Right. They can't set up on grass. So if they're the narrow road, they have stabilizers that come out the side and stabilize. It's not going to stabilize. Around, it's not going to work. Actually, Matt, that's a very, very good observation. Well, um, the, this um, does go, the, re the request for com com uh, comments do go to the fire chiefs. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but that's only for the variance, not for the overall plan. Right. That being said, I've got to believe that Deerfield Academy is doing due diligence in designing this. Could be wrong. Yeah. I, I We're probably would hesitate because... Okay. Sometimes they're more interested well, would in come um, the attractiveness the of it rather than having your pavement be wide enough for setting your up your ladder truck. So, okay, so what I can do is forward the fact that the project is happening to... Um, no, we just ask, we just, it's a simple check-in with Dick, because Dick would have the plans. Right, but I want to make sure that the fire chief in Old Deerfield, the fire chief in South Deerfield, and I can reach out to... Um, we would just uh, want to make sure that the actual yeah, the request for comment well. actually went to the fire chiefs, okay? Because this, you know, it looks like it's, they're supposed to be asking all the mm -hmm. people listed, you know, the committees listed and the individuals listed. Yes, they are. Um, and you, you might be able to get Dennis to take right. a look and give you a quick, without getting into a federal production, but it's right. better to be safe on the front then. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. because, um, you know that that's pretty wide i don't know how wide it is but that I'll might be up. substantial and and you have playing field issues and stuff so there mm. might there actually might that might be a serious issue right yeah yeah but yep. it does back up to a playing field so that's yep. actually they might not have made it wide enough 
We'll make sure that uh, folks are aware of it. Okay. Yep, that's a very good observation. Thank you, Matt. Okay. A um, few other things on my list. Um, a reminder to the three of you, once again, that the Small Town Summit will be happening tomorrow night. Uh, it starts at 7 o'clock. Refreshments have been ordered and will be available for attendees. We do expect to see representatives uh, from Steve Kulik's office here. I'm sorry, from Stan Rosenberg's office uh, here, as well as representatives from the FR COG, representatives from uh, the towns out in the, the very western part of the state. It's funny how we can refer to the western part of the state. Yeah. Um, and I believe it'll be pretty well attended. Yeah, um, uh, Paul um, sent me an email saying that he needed to go to his um, sister-in-law's birthday party. So Paul, she, had, Paul Dunphy ah, from Stim, okay. from Steve Kulik's office. Okay. So yep. he actually won't be there, but he yep. wanted to reiterate to us that anything that we needed followed up on, great. We yep. just need to um, let him know, and he would absolutely do it. Great. Yep. Um, he just apologized. This was something that came up you know, and some of the topics that are going to come up are, are, are going to need some legislative action and hopefully you know some of the breakouts would be geared to that I got an email today I didn't get a chance to read the whole list but some of the breakouts will be needing to put together you know action or legislation and okay for some of the items so you know be I'm not actually on that email list yet oh let me forward so, you yeah could yeah. you forward it yep. to me that I'd really really appreciate it sure um I was going going to ask Doug to get the agenda because it's pretty gross to be the host and not know what's going on. Yeah, but, yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I'll forward you all the stuff I have. Agenda, so I can get that to you. That's easy. Sure. Um, and to that end, the board or a representative of the board is expected to provide a few very brief comments and welcome people to. Yeah, I Trevor, would you yeah. mind yeah, doing that? Do it. Since you've yep. been participating, yep. sure. I very much appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Um, good. That's that. Um, obviously, the meeting happening on Tuesday. The AP and uh, payroll warrants are not available, but they will be available to sign tomorrow evening. So I'll have those in our offices separate, um, and I will make sure that each of you make a point to stop in and put your signatures on it, um, Okay. the payroll warrants. Um, and a final reminder that the uh, Lions Club Car Show is this Saturday, July 16, the Yankee Handle. Um, and a reminder also that you voted a moratorium on tax sales for the Elm Street extension and Elm Circle areas for that event. And I'm saying this is much for the benefit of the folks who might still be watching at 920 at night yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> you and know. I just want to remind people that um, the senior uh, center picnic yes. is tomorrow, tomorrow, 10 to 3. Yep. Yep. And um, if Nancy Pachorik is watching, I am tending to stop in. Me too. I'm trying to fit it into my day as yep. well. I really so, want to get involved there. Um, I, I feel terrible that I have four meetings scheduled tomorrow apparently already so busy day. i know but anyway um, okay and i think that's all i have but i'm uh well no i'm sorry one last thing um you have a copy i handed you a copy of the uh draft contract um between the town and the cog for planner services um this was presented to the planning board uh last night uh which approved it broadly speaking uh, but forwarded it to you for your review and approval. Um, I, I suggested that you would not be taking action on this tonight, um, but that would most likely be um, taken up on the meeting of the 27th. I, uh, Just why don't I speak on right, this please. topic for a couple minutes Thank so you, you have some clarification. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you'll notice on the budget line it talks of a final contract amount of $15,000. We're not increasing the um, amount of money that we're giving the FACOG, what this uh, represents is um, an additional increase of $7,500 that will be um, used and paid for by applicants. Uh, in the okay, past, we, we had up to our budget through the, the town and our budget process is $7,500. But what we found is that if an applicant comes in and they have to pay, they pay the town, then the town has to pay the FRACOG. But the FRACOG was concerned because it would put them over the $7,500 limit. So they increased the contract amount to 15000 uh, yeah. But yeah. it's we won't increase it on our town budget side. That's going to remain the same at 7500 So the fees okay. go to the general fund? 
Right. Okay. Well, that's, I don't know if they go to a general fund. Isn't no. there a separate? The fees do not go into the general, general fund. fund. Fees received for site plan review, uh, subdivision going review goes fund. to uh, the planning board revolving fund. fund. And to date, for FY16, out of the $7,500, I think the planning board spent 100 Yeah. So all the money that we spend comes out of that revolving yeah. account. Including the bulk okay. of the cost so, for this contract. So, so um, how much is in the revolving account now? Uh, I think Last it's about eleven thousand uh, dollars yeah. was turned over to this coming year. So, yeah. Oh, okay. There's plenty there. Yeah. Okay. And of course, seventy five hundred was appropriated to the planning board for their budget. So you have seventy five hundred in addition to. In addition to. Yeah. Seventy okay. five hundred. So right. Oh 17, yeah, that's that's plenty. And, you know, I'm going to I'm going to push that we okay. we lower our amount anyways. Uh, yeah, well, once you works. have a buildup of the revolving fund, yeah. it should be self-sustaining now. Mm, yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty it should much. Because, I mean, that was my concern, is yeah. that we weren't, we the town wasn't paying. No. And then they were it, charging. It's only a paperwork. Then we were having the fees being collected. Yeah. But it, it's only, because what we had to do this year, I guess, is a budget or a contract amendment. Okay. You know. And then there was some language in here also that was altered by the PROCOG because um, it was for uh, peer review, uh, which is kept separate from their planning advice. So in other words, if the planning board calls them and say, you know, can you help us work out the details of the zoning change, uh, that would come out of our $7,500 budget. But if they're here to do peer review, say on a, a proposed solar project, that would be paid by the applicant. I mean, okay. it just comes to the town and goes back to them okay, because the FRACOG did not want to collect the money from the applicant because they work for the town, not for the applicant. So yeah. Right. Right. Nope, okay. that makes sense. Thanks, okay. Yep. But, well, then, actually, I don't have a problem with this. We can vote this yeah. instead of waiting too long. Yeah, the FRACOG did not want to collect the money from the applicant. They don't want to work. For, they want to work. For, they're working for the, the town. 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 They don't, yeah. Otherwise, they end up having contracts. With each you know. individual applicant. Right. Well, and that's not their way their organization works. Hmm. Broadly speaking, when the uh, the Conservation Commission, let's say, uh, hires a peer review services for some project, um, the Conservation Commission makes the contract with the peer review consultant, um, who then provides an estimate for the cost. Right. The money is deposited into an escrow account uh, by the applicant, and the cost for those peer review services are paid for out of that escrow account. But the contract is between the town and the peer review. Client, That's what I'm saying. So that any of their work is paid for by, by, the, by the town. By the but, town. But the, Correct. the Conservation Commission is going out to individual engineering firms versus working well, with the firm. But, but it's still the same um, thing because it doesn't matter. The, if, the, if it's peer review, it's peer review. Right. And it's governed under 53G. But the difference, Doug, so, is that the applicant doesn't pay the peer review. They pay the town, then the town pays the oh, peer review. Oh, absolutely. And, and that's, in all that's cases, where the thing, that's Right, and what, the expectation the, is that any work that the peer review uh, service does is owned by the town. We own that, right. and, that and, work. Right, and that's what the FRACOG uh, made clear. They did not right. want to be working for the applicants. They wanted to, to separate, so. Well, sure. I make a motion that we approve this contract. I'll second the motion. No. no. Oh, I'm, okay. I'll second the motion. Okay. You should, I'll you make should. motion. I thought that's what you did. I'm no, sorry. no, no. I made the motion. And he seconded it because you're on the planning board. This is, we just want to make it clear that okay. we don't have any conflict with this. Although you did advise us okay. that we might have been an issue, but that's okay. Um, um, we um, asked for your advice. <laughs> all right. those in favor? Aye. Aye. One, two, Aye. Abstain. Oh, I'll abstain. Okay. Why? Okay. I abstain. <laughs> Not like that. I need a drink. <laughs> um, I will I'm have a copy of that for you to sign. Um, I don't have one prepared. I'll have one available tomorrow night. All right. Oh, okay, Kippy, we'll, we'll get you in shape here. Okay. I'll figure this out. Listen. Eventually. Okay, public comment at 9:25. You guys, um, I, I did better tonight. You did great, Carolyn. You'll Come on, don't me. encourage her. You'll be here tomorrow night. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I'll I'm have one be available here for, for you. Uh, yes. I will be here tomorrow night. I guess I'm the public this evening. Hey, public. <laughs> Hello, public. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. I really apologize for not giving you a heads up on this. Gee. We were. No worries. I, I guess I should first st start by thanking you all for the amount of time that you put into this. I, too, sat and listened to the debate at town meeting. 
and I watched the uh, comments made last week with the concern for your pay, I will state as a taxpayer, I feel that you're probably underpaid for what you do. Uh, I think <laughs> with your involvement in the school as a taxpayer, again, I'm very happy that somebody with some knowledge of roofing yeah. has been involved with that. As, as involved as you have, I was extremely impressed you've got contracts out and dug through it's probably a 200 page document there yeah. to find the right section oh yeah um, so yeah. thank you for looking out for our interests he put no in a uh, 33 hours last week yeah. um on the roof alone just to let all no, the sewer the sewer plant took oh okay six of those hours all right well yeah. uh, we, we just want to let people know that we do put in our 20 hours or more uh, yeah and i think I, you, the comment that you just made about you putting in 33 hours last week, I think that's something you need to let people know on a regular basis. Not to pat yourself on the back, but have them understand the type of commitment that's being made. And this isn't, I put my hand up to volunteer to do something for a $5,000 paycheck a year, because right. I can tell you the money's not worth it. Right. Not for all the, the time that goes into it. Well, it's very nice of you to say that, because I have to say that I, I was a little hurt when we were accused of being or I was accused of being a career politician. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> these guys have been only on the board for six weeks, so <laughs> who is really the career person here? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm going to follow in that same vein as in watching the last finance committee meeting and a couple of select board meetings and comments that have been made about South County EMS. I, too, am hurt. Uh, 25 years of serving the community, putting my time in, taking what was a a service that performed well for a number of years fell into disrepair, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. We sought a solution with other communities, put together what I thought was a pretty good plan okay. that has met everything we told people it was going to do and did it in a way that's been extremely cost effective. When you look at the cost of what South County EMS is to provide service to the town, it's about a third of what our police budget is. And the level of service. Exactly. It's, it's on par, and people will argue, it's on par with the police level of service. There are two people scheduled down there, uh, two people per shift, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They've added a third uh, person to cover middle of the day from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., along with Zach being here to help staff that second ambulance during those peak times. Yeah. And again, trying to be conscious of budget as we went forward with this thing. Um, five years of time and effort into getting it where it is today, three years of planning, and then two years of actual operations. Um, you know, there were, there were comments made about our budget and our budgeting. The budget that ended on June 30th was developed with seven months of experience behind us. Consultant came up with the first budget, town administrators, finance folks, myself, all worked to kind of bring that down to something realistic, making sure that when we sold it, we didn't undersell it and have to come back and ask for more. Mm -hmm. Probably being a little too conservative. Um, the end of last year, yes, there was about a half a million dollars left. A chunk of that money was capital money that was carrying forward. Mm -hmm. um, this year, the rates were dropped to the towns. They'll probably, from what I understand, there'll be money left over again that'll carry forward. But this is only the second year. When this year's budget was created starting for July 1, it was done so at 19 months of experience. When you look at the school's budget, the police budget, the town budget, there are a whole lot more years of experience to develop that budget. Mm -hmm. We're aware of that. We hired an EMS director. We didn't hire a chief finance officer. To Zach's credit, he's done very well. You heard Brenda tonight talk about how he worked with the town staff to come up with the numbers. The numbers in the budget aren't created in a vacuum. They're created in collaboration with the staff that are here in the office. So to come under attack about budgets being bloated and us not managing and mismanaging the service, I find personally offensive because I think this, the service has been managed incredibly considering you had three different volunteer organizations coming into one. Um, I, I appreciate the time that you took to dispel the rumors or the, the accusation that the transfer of the retirement costs was all our fault. And I, I'm not going to beat that up anymore. I think Brenda did a nice job explaining Brent, it. Uh, Barbara. Or Barbara did a nice job explaining it. I apologize. 
I, I did ask Barbara because it was confusing and we needed to clarify that there, there, there was no actual bill to begin right. with. Right. It was I, an overestimate. It was overestimated payroll based on this is what we're potentially going to have. And, you know, that's right. what we, I mean, it's always easier you were to. were prudent in not yeah. hiring what, right. what you didn't you need. We were, so. were being conservative in mm -hmm. management, and that, therefore okay. it was overestimated. And, but there was no actual bill. Right. And it, so there was no non-payment of the bill because there was no, no legit bill. Right. We had been accused previously of not paying our administrative costs for 2014. And that after doing clear. just a little bit of research and talking to the town accountant, she was able to pull up the memo that was shared that showed what we were billed and the money came out of the grant, as had been suspected. Again, accused that we didn't pay our part, and the person making the accusations never took the time to come to the Board of Oversight and bring that forward. It was a comment made in passing in a finance meeting. It wasn't a full Board of Oversight meeting, and I've asked over and over again, if you've got questions, please put them in writing and get them to me and I'll get you answers. And I think you can ask Dylan, whenever I had questions submitted, we got answers back to him. Mm -hmm. May not have been what he wanted to hear, but it was the answers. And then we could have further discussion from there. Um, you know, there was also an accusation made that we were, again, with the budget piece, all we were worried about doing was paying another $5,000 bonus. And Mr. Vachurik was asking you to send a memo to the Board of Oversight stating the town of Deerfield does not pay bonuses. Doug was very good to correct that and state it's a one-time payment for responsibilities outside the job duty. Um, when I did we, go we, back... We did clarify again. I just want to emphasize. We did clarify. It's easier to say bonus, and that's why I think people use the term bonus. But it is payment for work well beyond the, their job description. Sure. And in most cases, it was understaffing or um, startup issues or whatever. But they were all documented, and it was um, far excess of um, I'm, I'm a committed employee kind of situation. It, it, you know, people really stepped up to the plate. Coming out of the private sector, I appreciate the fact that that's done to recognize people who go above and beyond because I know we've got some great employees in town who put their heart into it every day. Well, and, and because the money was available for, um, I don't want to, this will start another controversy, but we were understaffed, so mm -hmm. the money was budgeted, and and so we, ha we had the ability to, to do that. It's Normally we don't have a pool of money to do that. There were two things there. Number one, we never talked about a bonus for this year. We were talking about Zach's performance. I completed a performance appraisal. It was shared with the board. They were going to add their piece. And follow-up discussion happened at the next meeting. I recommended and I asked Zach to put into the budget a $5,000 increase for himself based on his performance. And it was a placeholder in the budget. As far as I'm concerned, I think he's earned it. But you, I will be happy to forward along the evaluation that I've done. That you can take a look at and add your comments. We have to enter into the next discussion at the Board of Oversight. Um, but the other board members clearly wanted to have some input, so they were going to do it. And it's done on a town forum that meets with um, town personnel committee policy and what has to be done. But again, you know, Mr. Pachurik made the statement that the town of Deerfield does not pay those. And when I went back and I looked in minutes from last year, there were eight employees who did, in fact, receive one-time payments. So again, accusing us of doing something out of the ordinary that wasn't out of the ordinary. Um, you know, in short, the service has done a phenomenal job. Response time to all of our calls, no matter where they are, is down to seven minutes and nine seconds. In the town of Deerfield alone, I think it's about six minutes and eight seconds, and Zach will update. He updates us every month at our board meeting. Um, pre, prior to the start, our average response time at Deerfield when we had people on duty was 10 minutes, much longer when we didn't have people scheduled. And the big difference being that when they show up, typically there's a paramedic on your doorstep mm -hmm. as opposed to having to call somebody else Huge. when we have that additional level of service. Um, there's still confusion about why three ambulances, why is there an additional person during the day? Those are all issues that have been discussed at the Board of Oversight meetings. 
The third ambulance was recommended by the state. We already had it, we've kept it. It's proven to be a, a valuable resource for us. A number of different reasons that have been explained over and over again in Board of Oversight meetings. As far as the additional person during the day, we use the data that we're collecting through our patient reporting system to tell us where our gaps are. And like any good organization, we're addressing those gaps and utilizing the money. We had thought when we started this that people were going to sign up for these eight-hour shifts to be available. It isn't happening as we had thought. And as we're entering the third year, we're seeing what Bruce, uh, Bruce Baxter, who was a consultant, told us at about year number three, you're going to see your volunteers right. drop off. Is that right? And we're seeing that. Um, so this them... shift actually gives those volunteers, those on-call staff, the opportunity to work an eight-hour shift keep their skills up and you know Zach's been doing his best to plug the holes right why now. do you why do you think the volunteers are falling off like at three year three or something they've seen I'm just curious how that, how that works if they... I think part of it you've got a group of EMTs who have been with it for a long time yep who maintained it just in case I was one of those okay um, the state requirements to keep up your EMT you used to be able years ago we had meetings uh, locally yep. to keep that up um, we would do a local refresher. The refreshers were taken away locally and they needed a certified instructor with a certified institution, so that became a little more difficult. Yep. But you were able to do it all online. Okay. So it was a service you can go online and do it all, and then you could just show up and do a test, a practical exam. Yep. Um, with the new national registry that the state has implemented over the past couple of years, that's gone away again. Okay. So you can only do a third of it online. The other two thirds have to be live and in person. Um, Zach is working with a, an organization out of Greenfield who we've contra contracted out our training to yeah. because it's more than just showing up and doing it, it's tracking it, it's reporting it to the state. Uh, Matt, who runs our organization, does a tremendous job for us and eliminates, was one of the points of deficiency we had with the state initially with the training records. And it's no lack of anybody's I know. Uh, responsibility or wanting to do it. It was just so much that we were doing sure. getting it up and running. Yeah. Matt has taken that entire burden off of our shoulders and does a phenomenal job with it. The other nice part is he does it for a living. He's a professional trainer. He's an EMT. He's been recognized nationally. Wow. So it's a great program. Yeah. He's also involved with our medical director. So as trends come up that the medical director is seeing, he's able to get to Matt to develop training programs around that. So the uh, EMTs, are, it's harder to keep it up, and they're seeing you know, more and more paramedics coming on and they're feeling like is this worth keeping up or is it well our, our volunteers are aging right and the, and, the, and the businesses and don't let up. them out as much right I mean that's another like you used to be able to like drop your work and run to the ambulance and less desire to get up in the middle of the night yeah, yeah. and at the end of the day of you know it's we are living in a world where it's mom and dad both work right and when you're doing 40 hours and you've got kids that you're shuttling all over. You know, usually the EMTs that we get were young. And for a yes. long time, out of high school, we'd get them. They'd stick around town, farming, mm -hmm. Yankee Candle, Hardig yes. Industries. They had work. Yes. Well, as schools get better and, and demands of work and life get better, they go off to college. Right. Now that they've gone off to college, they don't always come back right away. Right. When they do come back, they've got the boyfriend or girlfriend getting married, having a kid. So you might get a couple of years. As soon as the kids come along, they're busy. Your mom and dad taxi in the night. Yeah. You know, after you get through the, the diaper, the toddler, mm -hmm. the pre-K stage. Um, you're shuttling. Yeah. So that little bit of time you do have, you're trying to sleep and get stuff done around the house, as opposed yeah. to running off and trying to keep certifications up. Right. Right. Um, you know, it's it's nothing new. The fire service is seeing the same type of yeah. decline in volunteerism. We were lucky in that there were other like-minded communities, Waitley and Sunderland, who are having similar issues. And we put politics aside to say, we know we're failing, we recognize that we're failing, how do we make this work? Yeah. And how do we make it work in the best way with the model that will be affordable and sustainable right. going forward? So right. it's you know kind of brought us to where we are today. The beauty of that group has been, um, the politics has been left out of it. And the, the sole focus of the group has been, what do we do to make the service better? We, I know there's been discussion about Deerfield should have additional votes on that board. I, know. I believe there's been, and you can go back and records and look, one or two votes that have been taken where there's been one dissenter. Typically, it's quite a bit of conversation to make sure we're all in agreement before votes are taken. And it's 
for legit reasons why. That's been said. Um, you know, there have been comments about we're still talking about housing and where this thing is going to wind up. Mm -hmm. You know, we wish we had solved it up front. We actually had talked about buying that building and doing as an EMS building in a senior center, and mm -hmm. we couldn't get our arms around how an enterprise fund could do the purchase and get a mortgage and, and take right. care of all that and wait and stepped up and, and took care of it. Um, you know, in a perfect world, we would have liked to have had that settled before we started. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the answer. And right. I, I think the group felt it was uh -huh. more important to get a service started and take care of the community than it was to fight a turf war over where this thing was going to end up yeah. being housed eventually. But we knew we had that window of time where we were going to need to get something uh, something more permanent. I made a comment to Jeff, and I appreciate you taking the time to get the drawings done. When I had approached this in the past, I got told the town has no appetite for another couple million dollar building project. Um, I, and nothing against the library folks. You know, <laughs> I, I sit here and, you know, there's no money for EMS, and we're looking at uh, quite an expansive library I hear you. Uh, project going on. So, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, I. I can only ask that as a representative for the town, you've got the passion around this. I know you've got you've got quite a bit on your plate already, and I can see the passion you've got for the, the things that you're involved in. Um, it's a service that has done well. It's a service that needs, it runs well. The folks who are doing the job day to day do a phenomenal job. The biggest challenge we've had is fighting the mistruths and the rumors and, and the stories that get generated out of this town. We go to the meetings, they sit down like, what are people thinking? And you try to take the time to explain what's going on and get to the bottom of it. I would only hope that in the future, and I know we've got new members of the Finance Committee coming, before we blow things up into big monumental issues, could we take the time and stop for a minute and go ask the people who have got the answers to weigh in and give us the answers. I mean, the retirement thing mm -hmm. would have been great if we could have solved that before it became a, a three-week-long episode in front of this group in the finance mm -hmm. um, uh, Matt, I, 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 I just want you to know that um, I very much appreciate everything you have done mm -hmm. because I've worked alongside you for many years um, and you, how committed you are. And um, what we did was appoint ourselves, which sounds terrible, um, versus appointing you who are so totally committed and informed. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I, it, I, I will own up to being my idea. Um, I couldn't think of anything else that would solve the problem. And we talked about it for weeks as, okay, I'm throwing this out. I'm open to anything. What do you guys have? And ultimately, we couldn't think of anything else that would work. We anticipate us being um, appointees to South County for a relatively short time. I mean, I, I, I'm going to leave it open-ended. I'm not going to commit to any length, but um, what we're going to do is um, uh, appoint alternates for our positions. We're, we're going down to South County as a commitment to the, to the service. Mm -hmm. and. And the reason why I felt that the only way that we're going to solve some of the issues is not a he said, she said, we're out of the loop because, you know, we're in this meeting mm -hmm. and then, you know, nothing's on our agenda. We're, we're going to start our business and we have public comment. And so I, I arbitrarily moved public comment to, to the end today because we really have to do our business. But... We're not prepared. Public comment is, is, is incredibly important. We're, it's, it's, we need to listen. We need to clarify. We need to um, address, direct people to where they're supposed to go, whatever. But we can't have lengthy conversations because we need to do our business. Sure. So the whole point of um, appointing ourselves was so that we could go down and show commitment to South County and show how much we appreciate the service because it is a life, I mean, it, it could be a, a potential life um, difference between life and death and, and the quality of life if, if you're rehabbing someone. 
mm. obviously. So um, it's, it's a critical, to, I mean, it's the bottom line, a safety issue. And to me, if it's a safety issue, it's not negotiable. It's, we are committed 100%. Sure. So we're going down, and we are committing and being informed, making decisions. But I am hopeful that you will participate in the meetings because at some point the idea is that we would flip and become alternates. So there is always, at every single meeting, there will be three Deerfield representatives. If any one of us can't come, our alternates come. And when our alternates become the, the, the person, then the, uh, we would step up and go to that meeting. But the whole point is for us to be informed so that misinformation could end and that, that we move forward. And I, I hope that you would I, I, I understand. I completely understand. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to stand in the way of progress. And I'm happy to yield the floor. I, I if, was going to say no, means, healing, healing. Well, healing, we, we can use whatever. whatever terms we want. If we're going to move this thing forward, right. okay. if I happen to be a roadblock, I'd be ha I'm happy to get out of the way. I, I just I want the service to succeed. I have a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and time into mm -hmm. this thing, and I just want it to succeed. And I thank you all for taking the time to get involved. And I guess my only little piece of advice is, if there's anything we could do to help, and I was not good at this, help mending the fence between South County EMS and our finance committee and trying to get them to interact better with that board to get the questions answered before we turn everything into a political circus. I think it might yield some better progress. Makes sense. Well, we're going to try. So. I, and I, 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 would you guys? I mean, I don't know what, how you. That's that's comment. my goal is to is to you know get involved as much as we can. But my initial goal was that I did not want to see myself um, being appointed to boards and then have to set. You know, my whole focus was to not dive into a board sure. because I want to be able to step back and take. Um, you know, an educated decision on it and take recommendations from another board. We felt this would be a, a cooling off period of mm -hmm. just kind of get in, get this location figured out, um, and get the, and I believe 110% in that service and what you guys are doing, and I believe you need to be together. Um, and I want to get it cited and step back, just get it moving because you guys are. Mm -hmm. You guys have set up an amazing service. Amazing service. It does great things but for our town. This is not a, a takeover in the sense of a takeover. Mm. It's. I'm. I, like I said, I'm. I, okay. Don't worry about my feelings. I'm. I was upset at first. I've gotten past sure. that. I'm fine as long as we're going to make progress and we're going to keep the thing moving forward. That's. I mean, I think I'm hoping. My vision was to get this thing set up, as you said, cited, up and running, all in one building, get everybody together. Yep. And then I was going to evaluate my continued involvement in it. Um, but I've kind of dug my heels in to this point because there's been so much. And it's at such a critical stage. And the yes. people who cast stones don't truly understand what they're casting stones about. And the part that bothers me is those people who are speaking the loudest had opportunities in years past to take that ambulance service and put it into the fire department or take the ambulance and do different things with it. And they chose at that point not to, for whatever reason, and left us to stand on our own. And then we've come up with a solution that works and works well. Mm -hmm. Now they want to tear it down when it's at a point of being successful. What I'd like to weigh in, too, is that uh, I also believe in the service, and I think that it's very well run. Mm. Um, but I also don't believe that a lot of the misinformation you speak of was generated just in Deerfield. I think there's a lot of blame to go around. And I also am not going to point fingers. And I've been working, and I will continue to work hard to find what is the best solution for South County EMS, putting all communities aside, because I know that the success of that uh, unit is going to benefit all the communities. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that um, I've been very not necessarily quiet, but deliberately not going a lot of different places with my work. 
Mm -hmm. I, I talk to people, I listen to what they have to say, I take the information, and I feel that up to this point in the near future, I'm going to direct all of my information to the person or persons where it really matters the most and leave the financial other ends of it and the other people involved out until I come up with things. Then I will bring them to the Board of Oversight um, and then, then we'll go to the towns. I think that's an appropriate way to do it. And, uh, you know, I, I, that was the best way that I could see about doing this. And like Trevor said, I'm not real keen on being a board member on something else for a long mm -hmm. time because I'm the kind of person that um, I really like to know what I'm talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And I can't sit here and claim to have anywhere near the experience that you have. Right. And I don't have the time to learn that experience, you know. So I'm going to do what I can do to help move this thing forward and get a resolution to what seems to be the biggest issues. And at this point, it's not the service, it's the location. Right. And uh, I will work with Waitley or Sunderland or whatever and, and to, to get the best thing for them. If there's yeah. anything I can do to help with history I'm sure, reasons, I'm sure why, there will feel be. free to reach out. Mm -hmm. Well, Matt, one of the things that I think would be very helpful is if you would continue to come to the meeting. I'm going to do my best to be there as okay, much as I can. Okay, I mean, this yeah. is, yes, we are the official voting members, but as you know, business goes on because through consensus right. and you get things done by working together and there really is not i know the vote thing has been you know back and forth back and forth but on any committee that i've ever been on you work together so you have consensus and it's not it never comes down to any one vote because if if it's really uh, that kind of contentious then that's not really the good solution right so i think you know i think they've made the comment that you've tried not to take a vote if another town was we not have. there. You'd yeah. postpone and we've tried to work through it and we've postponed to another it's a great, meeting to great give way people to work. time to research and get Yeah. Get yeah. I mean I honestly I, I I don't know. I mean so anyway, I it would be very helpful because uh, even though I've had some background because we you know went worked on the waiver and stuff, but it's it was years ago. Oh yeah. And um my, the information I have is, or the experience I've had is pretty outdated, and so I would very much appreciate if you would continue to come so we can um, count on your expertise mm. um, in the discussions, because that's, that's not the point, was mm. to cut people out, but we, we had to figure out a way to solve it, and that's what we're doing is going forward. And, and so... The most helpful thing I think you could do is, is would be to continue to offer your um, expertise and, and making sure that it continues to run correctly. Mm -hmm. my, my concern um, was that we um, not hold up the, the housing issue as much as, as we could. We could move forward with it because um, I think it's critical. Mm -hmm. We've already seen that that second ambulance is going out on a regular basis. So having the service together is, is, is a number one priority for me because it's just how can you complain about the service being efficient or criticizing for not being f efficient when you're ha making them have three different locations? That doesn't even and make sense. Just the cohesion of a group and a team when you're Thank together you. and, right. and the, um, the camaraderie you have when you have your own home and you're together and you study together and you train together and you you're all in one spot. I, I think it's immensely valuable. So whatever we can do to move that forward to be really and I a know, goal of And ours. I've known, um, you know, just, and again, this is outside observation. But, you know, we're, you know, Zach has done an awful lot of work, but he's doing a lot of clerical work. So, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a part-time clerical person would be one thing to be consider so that we could, you know, have him, once we get a location, then he could handle some of the paperwork that is involved and, um, free him up to do some of the other services that Outreach. we had talked about, you know, the well-being checks, the blood pressure clinics, you know, the kind of things that, the extras that we were talking about, but all those extras can't be developed if he's, you know, ha you know it's, if they're not under one roof. Mm -hmm. well, and, that's, and that's one of the things yeah, it's, that... It's been the challenge know. of a startup organization. Is there's yeah. a lot to get done, and you right. can't get Absolutely. to the, the frills until you get the basics done. Right. And, and the frills... 
is a part that our folks enjoy. Right. They enjoy the patient contact. It's that building that cl that uh, community buy in to right. your and, and giving them that help and the outreach. It's extremely important. Right. Well, one of, and and again, you know, we go back to paying for money, but you know, we we just don't have younger people, and so one of the things that's really important to me is that we offer some kind of outreach to the high school so that kids that aren't doing sports maybe or even the kids that are doing sports but you know that are there are kids that w would feel drawn maybe to the fire service or the EMS and and so to have uh, EMS have a program that you could be junior EMS or whatever like junior firefighters or whatever mm -hmm. it, it just get people excited so that they can start going through the process and if you engage a, 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 a kid it gives them a wonderful thing to put on their college resume if they're if they're going to go to college. But if if it, it just gets kids engaged mm, right. instead of hanging out and and maybe part part of the community and somehow yeah. we've got to figure out outreach from from a local government point of view because we're just not generating young people either. Yeah. And so I I think there's a huge opportunity we're missing because. We're not reaching out to the high school, and you can't do that again when you're not under one roof. And so, and I, I think once we get the housing issue settled and we've got our own place, it lends more opportunity mm -hmm. to bring young people in, have sure. them be there, yeah, in that community space, house, learning, practicing, out. going through equipment, and well, you, you have know, a, feeling welcome, you have, right? And you have a cohesive service that you can offer that for, and you know, if, if that one child is engaged. And does something, and is not getting in trouble yeah. or whatever. I'm just and as, a parent, of, as a parent, as a parent of four teenagers, you wanted your kids engaged and sure. busy. And and how wonderful if if even they're if helping just people. One kid, it's so worth it. So well, it's nothing better than lighting program. a spark to somebody who's going right. to go on and become a nurse right. or a doctor or sure. You know, Absolutely. Invent the cure to cancer. Who knows? But I know. That's what it I always mean. has to it's, start somewhere. It's huge. It's huge. It's just not a. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, the opportunities are huge. So anyway, I, I'm, it's, we're trying to fix it. Ten, so I thank you so thank much you for, for your coming time. and your comment and okay, waiting until the end. I think it's time to, for you to move to the next agenda item. <laughs> <laughs> thank what you, is Pat. the next agenda item? Well, we have meetings. meetings. We have tomorrow night. And then what else do we have, Doug? Uh, got uh, next. The only next meeting I have is the 27th. Okay. 27th of July, right? That's right. Okay. What do we need to do again? for executive session? Nothing. Nothing. Doug just put it on there. I okay. put that on there as a purple one. No okay. reason to go into it. I, I haven't had any chance to do anything. So. 27th. Okay. Wow. My phone was busy while I was here. <laughs> um, after you journal, I've got everything ready to sign. So. Okay. Oh, for that. Thing. Okay. Uh, mostly it's Carolyn. So I'll make a motion to adjourn. I second the motion. Oh, okay, good. I was going to say, if you're not going to be quick, I'll be quick. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs>